Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crossroads Podcast. I am your host, LeBron Dawkins, and tonight we have a full squad here with us tonight. Yeah, I feel so good to say that, you know, sometimes here. Uh, as always, the resident PlayStation doctor, Austin Campbell, is here. What What's up, up Big everyone? Daddy? What up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Bios- whoa. Bioshock reference, nothing whoa. else. Nothing oh, else. Okay, Bioshock okay. reference, okay. nothing okay, else. Good, good. It's hard yeah. to tell anymore. It's hard to tell these days. I don't know. First we first we were showing off our boxes to each other and how big they are, and now you're calling another dude's da- big daddy here. And yeah. Just, mm. Mm. This is a family podcast. It reminds me. Keep... Of a, it reminds me of a mission that was in a uh, in a game that we'll talk about later because uh, I was I was it was definitely a daddy moment, but it was weird. It was it was very strange. Uh, let's just put it this way. I'm, I'm keeping you guys on your toes. That's all. <laughs> also with us tonight is that guy, Stoy Boy, Mr. Stoy Jovich. How's it going? It's a, actually a weird coincidence because um, I was playing Bioshock Infinite today. Oh, mm. see? See? Yeah. Everything. Weird choice. Uh, yeah. Weird, choice. Weird, weird coincidence. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it when I get to the Good old Clinky Dinks. Yeah, but uh, Weird. And joining us in the fourth chair tonight is uh, that is the legendary Mr. Corey Derrick. What's up, bro? Hello. Thank you for inviting me to your special program here. I'm very excited. Very excited. Mm, yeah. Be yeah. Very welcome. I, I'll fill time while you're eating because that's I'm always, that's not I'm, normal on these he's shows. Not, I'm always munching on something. Come on, Definitely. Laurent. Do you have like a mini fridge under your desk? Not yet. Mm. Story Not yet. Does. It's funny because I was I just thinking about that. Fridge, as you can see. <laughs> How many people are jealous of you? Um, those aren't this actually guy. that hard. To <laughs> I mean, you got to look, but it's not that I can't find one. It's that I think my wife would murder me if I brought another giant box into this house. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so those fine. are. Those are hard to, you know, they're hard to hide underneath your jacket. So. <laughs> underneath your jacket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yep. Here's here's a question. Here's a question because, like, with the exception with the exception of me, everybody here is married. Like, what's been the longest time you've hidden something from your wife? You know, well, not so much hidden something, but, you know, like, basically, basically, you know, kept it out of sight until, until she ultimately finally noticed it. Laurent, after dark is tomorrow night. Okay, okay, okay. You guys want to be on, you guys want to be on after dark tomorrow night because I, I want to know the answer to this question. I'm gonna say I don't. I I always thought that was kind of weird that you know um, why should I have to hide anything from her? You know, if if it's something I'm afraid about, I'm gonna tell her because you know I'm I'm a man and I have superiority. So oh. if I walk home and say I just blew fifteen thousand dollars on a motorcycle. She's going to accept it whether she likes it or not. So I'm just waiting for her to come down. You just see this vanilla envelope slide in and says, you've been served. Yeah. She works for lawyers, so I knew I'd get my ass kicked. But um, no, I, I like, I mean, all the misogyny aside, I don't lie to her. That, that'd be bad. It's always bad. It's yeah, a bad time. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially if like you're kind of like feeling guilty about it, like you're gonna crack and you're gonna say something, and then she's gonna be like, "Why didn't you tell me sooner?" And I was like, "Well, I was going to." And there's no, there's no excuse out of that. Yeah. <laughs> you were going to. <laughs> yeah. Who's going I, to? Uh, I, 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 I don't lie either, and I wish that I, I did more often, because most every time that <laughs> I lose, I lose a bet, I tell her. But she's like, why would you lose a bet? And I'm like, well, sometimes that happens. But I've been winning bets more more often than losing. But she's like, why'd you lose that one bet? Why'd you lose five Why'd you bucks? lose that one bet? But but <laughs> but but Katie, I've won a thousand dollars. Why'd you lose five bucks that one time? All right, well, and then it's over. It's over. You know. So sometimes I wish I didn't tell the truth. But sounds like she doesn't like being with a loser there, Austin. Mm. Right? Mm. Listen. We're not in the hole. That's all I can say. That's that's my whole gambling. That's my whole gambling. Uh, At least you're thing. not. Uh, just, you're, we're you're not, not in the questioning hole. where your next meal's coming. So yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, it but, might be little Caesars. It might be a Kraft mac and cheese box, but we got it's it. Food, you know. 
<laughs> hey, so this craft mac and cheese is all right. Okay. Well, let, let's be real. It's not craft mac and cheese. It's Aldi mac and cheese. We we gotta we gotta cut it. We gotta cut it even too. better. We gotta cut yeah. It that's that's definitely you know, better. You gotta get the cheap stuff, man. It's true. Corey, Aldi's you don't want to take a stab. Deal. Corey, you don't want to take a stab at this question. No, pass. <laughs> <laughs> Hard pass. Well, you guys can find me Wednesday nights on the Boss Rush After Dark podcast. Just, just, a, just a small preview of what happens there. Well, would How's you lie? Would, huh? you, what? would you keep something from your significant other? Uh, it all did. Mm. It all. Well, you know what? Mm. I haven't gotten to. I haven't gotten to a point where I'm like seriously committed in a relationship to like to like even think about doing that. You know. Uh, my boyfriend and I, we do we do this thing where it's like, hey, guess what I got? And it's like, did you uh, you better tell me something that you told me you're not gonna get? And you know stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, but um, I for the for the sake of sanity, I would also have to say like, no, I'm not going to like hide. Well, not not hide or like just be completely deceptive about something that you know like they definitely need to know about stuff like that. You know, I'm not a jackass either, but you know it. It's funny how it's funny how you know like we 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 hear these scenarios where you know like somebody's wife gets pissed like Austin remember remember <laughs> the guy disguised his PS5 as a fucking as a fucking router no, no, oh, yeah. it wasn't a router yeah. no no it wasn't a router what was it, it was like an air air purifier or something like that oh uh, yeah it was like uh yeah it was one of those air purifiers or like uh whoa. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what just happened? Somebody Don't just, know. somebody just, somebody just killed, somebody just killed the entire feed because uh, they had to engage together mode. Like, I love you guys, but uh, <laughs> someone's, someone's about to get. Did that affect so... you all? Did that affect you all? It yes. did. Yes, yes. it did. Yeah, and it, it, it actually, and actually. <laughs> And it actually <laughs> killed all you guys on the live feed. Um, oh, wow. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry, because I'm like, I'm like trying to mess around. I'm like, oh, I've never played with together mode before. And uh, I didn't realize that that effect. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Look at I this. I got to only... ti- time stamp this and edit it now. <laughs> edit it out of no, the show. Leave it in. Nope, leave, it leave, it in. It in. leave it in. We're it's about fun. authenticity here. Yeah. Because that's, what, that's what the uh, A and Crossroads means. Authenticity. <laughs> oh, man. Also, I'm very happy that uh, Amazon or Twitch Prime just reminded me that I have to resubscribe to Laurent. Oh yeah, I may need to check oh, yeah. see if I can do mine. It says oh, your yeah. next Prime sub will be available in three days. Use it on Exodus eight zero three. Oh man, Prime loves me, and I and I love that it's making you love me. I love that. <laughs> you feels, like Laurent? Feels sketchy. How's it? How's everybody been? Like it, it, you know, well, tired, Laron. <laughs> tired, tired, tired. I, I, yeah, yeah, pre, yeah. Preach to the choir, bro. Like I am, I am tired. Mm. That's all. Mm. <laughs> I'm also good. Thanks for asking. Appreciate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I, mm-hmm. I actually have a follow up to your question, but I may just ask you all that on the Boss Rush podcast. Are you coming um, on the Boss Rush podcast? You meant the no, but oh. I could ask it to you guys, and you can answer on the show if you want. Or I can oh, come we on. Don't, we don't. We I don't. Thought, we, I thought you were coming we on. We don't field questions. We don't field questions anymore. Oh. Well, then screw you guys. I'll keep it's my own question. We <laughs> make do. an exception. Make an exception. We should yeah. field questions. Nobody ever asks asks the well, audience to ask answer questions. Well, that is true. Let that me, is true. Let me let me ask it, and you tell me if it's a a, a sure enough question. Okay. Okay. Online okay. to your significant other, what mm. if you were cursed by a weird, spooky monster man, and you were going to die in five years? Would you tell your significant mm-hmm. other? There's yes. nothing wrong with that's, you. You just are going to die in five years. That's that's definitely a tell. That's definitely a tell your spite a spouse. Don't don't hide that shit. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's uh, yeah, she probably say something. But would you want her to constantly think about how it's going to be your last day? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Appreciate your time a little bit more. Mm. Mm-hmm. True. Mm. 
And also, and also give me, also give me to do while well, you know, you know, like be really daring in the relationship. Be like, hey, is it time to open a relationship up since I'm not going to be here that much longer? See, here's the thing: would you use it for manipulation over your significant other? Nah, I, I would not. Mm. I would, I would not. That's that's how that's how you wind up getting. That's how you wind up dying earlier than the, than the whatever timeline <laughs> is set for you. I think um I think Austin, I, I think Austin's getting somewhere here because when the cards are stacked up against you. How far are you willing to go to really change up your attitude in terms of, well, I'm only I'm going to die in four years anyway, or I'm going to die in however many years. Yeah. You know, fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. So it kind of turns people into monsters, I guess, in a way. So what a very deep philosophical question there, Austin. Mm. Yeah, that was that was good. The correct question is you would learn how to make crystal meth and you would be the next Walter White and Breaking Bad, but <laughs> I'll accept all your answers. I mean, that's another that's another thing you can do. Make sure that, you know, your your spouse, you know, is, is living somewhat of a good life once you once you punch your ticket. Yeah. That's why I don't know if I'd actually say anything. That's why I, I don't know. Would you just start growing meth and then she, you know, why do you, she, she'd walk yeah. in and be like, OK, new hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just out I'm out there plowing the fields, just planting seed, meth he seeds. Said, he said plow. <laughs> plow the fields and planting meth seeds. Waiting for the meth, meth to grow. Seeds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Why you put Usinex uh, into the ground like that? Uh, you know. Just, just growing meth. <laughs> <laughs> jeez jeez uh anybody anybody else want to tell me how they're how they're doing <laughs> i'm hungry I'm good so i'm gonna i'm gonna try i'm gonna make it through the podcast so uh, wait 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 what <laughs> the room the, the, the room is still spinning for me right now so i'm trying to maintain what? a level wait what happened uh i've been having vertigo the last week and a half so uh, oh, oh fine shit. yeah yeah it's, it's still it's still happening it went away for it went away for a few days, and then all of a sudden it came back on Sunday, and it's still kind of it's still kind of going. So I got like head exercises I have to do to try uh -huh. to kind of loosen up a lot of the a lot of what's going on in my inner ear and stuff. So that sounds fun. Oh, it's great. Consider Fantastic. me not jealous. Yeah, I you know I mean if you want it, you can have it. Mm. Nah, it's weird. I don't, like it's I, weird. I'm I don't just, want like, it in a haze. So it's, I don't it's want like, it. If I feel like I'm in a haze today, that's the reason why. So, well, so far, so far, you're faking it pretty well. All right, good. Generally good at that. Like, yeah, you look <laughs> great. You're good at faking it. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I, I, I I was. I wasn't gonna say a word. <laughs> I was not gonna say a word. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take it there. Yeah, I went. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Mm. We're good. Mm. We're good. Did you? Good. Great. All right. Cool. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm about to do this thing, and hopefully this will be the last time this thing gets hap gets gets happening on it happens on the show. God, grammar tonight, Laurent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Put <laughs> 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 a beat behind that. <laughs> What are All we right. doing here? What is the show? <laughs> I, I don't know. Laurent, I know you said this you were is, changing the format, but Jesus Christ. This is the this the is the this is the crossroads. This is the crossroads podcast. It's no it's no longer the PlayStation podcast. This, this is, is the crossroads where, this podcast. Is where, this is where PlayStation, <clears throat> Xbox, and bullshit kind of meets the crossroads. Mm, gotcha. Right in the middle. Right in the middle <laughs> is bullshit. Right in the sphincter. This is Crossroads, <laughs> the podcast from Crossroads Games, the games podcast for Crossroads Games. There we go. <laughs> Every week we come together bringing the latest news, rumors, games, and general discussion in the world of PlayStation, uh, as well as PC, um, and also that Xbox thing. <laughs> Just bear with me, guys. I, it'll get better. <laughs> Crossroads airs live on twitch.tv slash x is eight zero three Tuesday evenings, normally at eight PM Eastern Standard Time, unless we have situations like, you know, like a whole computer crashes and you know it kills all your work, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, but beyond that uh, you can check out the show uh, by heading over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or other podcast locations if you miss it during the live event. Uh, recaps of the show airs early on Wednesday nights, seven PM. 
on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash XS803, as well as early Thursday mornings at youtube.com slash, wait, you know what? We no longer load them to Boss Rush Network YouTube, but we do, we do have the event ready to go on our parent website, bossrush.net, on Thursday mornings. So check that out there. Uh, if you want to see previous episodes of our show, all episodes can be found on bossrush.net. And if you like the show, please consider subscribing to the podcast and giving us a follow on Twitch. <laughs> and one last thing to note, remember to share, rate, and review us wherever you check out the show. So, there. Yeah. There. I didn't I didn't I didn't bumble it too bad. <laughs> you, you're 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 awesome at what you do, man. You're doing great. I, I, I give I, you I a try. pass. Yeah. I try. I try. All I mean, right, guys. If, if we were given our podcast grades, that would be a C. But you know what? That still makes you a podcaster. Mm. Mm. As he as he takes a long sip of his Bud Light seltzer. Yeah. D minus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had we had, we had a party D-. recently, and these are like the these are like the things that are left behind. So I've been drinking them. That would have been emptied and dumped into the sink. <laughs> do they do they taste like a seltzer, or do they actually take like a a fruit drink. They actually taste more like a fruit drink than a seltzer. Like they don't, mm. they don't, they don't taste like something that's been inside somebody else's mouth before it wound up in the can. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty much Lacroix. How many, uh, how yeah. many uh, sexual innuendos are we gonna have in this episode? That's how we're on the <laughs> God, don't kill my vibe, guys. Come on. It's like. <laughs> This sounds. This smells like it tastes like it was in someone else's mouth. What is this? I feel like I feel like this podcast is here just to. We're just the fluffers. Ron's getting ready for after the podcast. <laughs> oh God. Guys, what have we been playing? What have we been playing this past week? <laughs> I didn't hear a denial. <laughs> tell I me, guys, either. what video? Tell me, guys, what video games have we been playing? <laughs> Corey, you're the you're the guest tonight. You go first. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> so I've been playing uh, the new Mario Kart tracks. Uh, they're okay. They're not. They're not great. But they're okay. Mm-hmm. You don't, been you playing don't like a lot the... of. Wait, 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 wait. Weren't wait, weren't you one? Of the, weren't you one of the people that was getting all like you? You were getting. You're getting friction burns in your pants when they announce these things. Right? I am excited for the 40 more tracks that'll be released over the next 18 months. These are these are okay at best. Mm. There's when I would they, say when they announced this, the switch actually got up on its legs and like grabbed Corey right in the taint and just hung there. <laughs> yeah, new Mario Kart track. Do you like that? I do. <laughs> Uh, there, I'd say there's one great track. Uh, it's some sort of Tokyo thing. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Uh-huh. But it's I think fun. that was that was from the cell phone game, right? That one. Uh, maybe. Wait, did they wait? Did they convert? Did they convert a track? <laughs> they three yeah, of I think them. Some of them. Yeah. These are all all the tracks that are coming out are remade tracks from some other Mario Kart game, and I oh, think okay. there's three tracks from Mario Kart Tour. Except the Ninja one, right? Isn't the Ninja one brand new? No, it's from Tour. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, that was the one I was thinking of. That's weird. I wondered why I didn't say Tour on it, though. Because on Paris... No, no, tour and... tracks, the Mario Kart Tour tracks, don't say anything on them. Mm. Which mm. is weird. I don't know why they couldn't just type out Tour. But... Mm. I don't know. Uh... But other than that, I haven't really played a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, work's been super busy, and I've been recording a lot to try to get ahead on stuff. And uh, Laurent's making me make him new assets for everything because, you know, he's oh, a jerk. Wait, wait, wait. Nobody, nobody's making you. I, <laughs> I, I, I asked. I, 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 I gently suggested. No, I... <laughs> You said, hey, you up? I need new assets. <laughs> okay, they did kind of go like that. <laughs> then today, while I'm frantically working at the new position at my job, hey, did you make me new assets yet? We got a show to put out. No, s- sorry, sir. Sorry, I'll sir. I'll get right on it, sir. Oh, Jesus. Come on, man. Come on. It, it was not like that. It was not like that. 
making it sound making it sound like I'm some hard ass around here or something. <laughs> making LeBron sound like he's Debo. <laughs> <Where's my bike? laughs> oh um, god! But I played I played some Tetris Effect uh, on on my trip because it's just an easy game to pop in and out of, and then uh, play a little bit of Xenoblade Chronicles. That's that's kind of it. I haven't really been playing anything. Uh, I've just been really busy. I guess Destiny also. I've been playing that because I always play Destiny. But what else is new? All right, all right. Uh, Austin, you're up. I played two games mainly. Uh, Best Buy. I I tried to get. I tried to order MLB the Show through Best Buy. See mm-hmm. what happens if they would bring it to my house on time. They did not, and uh, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, so we'll see. Oh no! Wait, wait, and, but this we'll is, see. but which edition is this? This is the this is the MVP edition. The steel book. Has, the steel book which has the steel book. It's, yeah, it's fire. I can't wait to show it off. That steel book um, is really cool, by the way. Yeah, that artwork is that artwork is <laughs> fucking beast. Well, the last. MLB the show that I bought was 19. I think I'm pretty sure 19 was the last one that I bought and played. So it's been mm-hmm. a while, but I saw that steel book. I was like, yeah, that's the one I'm playing 22 this year. Uh, so instead I played NHL 22 for a good while. I've been playing a lot of NHL lately because um, NHL and NBA are fixing to go into a playoff uh, season. And so I really want to play both, but NBA 2K sucks this year, so I've been playing NHL mostly. Um, And then I'm playing Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, Still, I've been... How are you enjoying it? How are you enjoying it? I love it. I I really do. I think it's my favorite game this year so far. Um, It's just doing a lot of things differently. And what I realized, actually, which I hadn't noticed before... But this could almost be a first person, and Stoy can tell me if I'm right on this. First person infamous. It reminds me of Infamous Second Son a lot, uh, as far as like <clears throat> you you can't really fly, but you you're doing you can float across buildings and stuff, and you yeah. are the way you shoot your projectiles is a lot like Infamous. Um, mm-hmm. And it's all for and you have different elements. Yeah, you know, different you elements. Fire. You got water. You got you know wind. <laughs> so I I I kind of noticed that today while I was playing. I was like, oh, this is this has got some infamous into it. And who knows when we're getting another infamous? If we'll ever get another infamous, you know who knows. But you can stream uh, it on your PlayStation Five now. I can download Second Son. We won't talk about how I have to play the other two, <laughs> which is through my PS3. But uh, so yeah, I've been playing a lot of that. There was a I had a mission today where a, a guy was treating another guy as a as a dog. And that was an interesting mission. That was the daddy reference that I was thinking about earlier. <laughs> the daddy reference. <laughs> Yeah, there's this guy who was treating his uh, treating his brother like a dog in the game. Oh, and his brother. Oh, this, oh, this is in the game. Okay, yeah, I haven't yeah, gotten that. I game. haven't gotten to that part yet. It's a side mission. It's a side mission, but yeah. Um, uh huh. But I I heard those side I, missions are fun. The side missions are interesting. There's a few that get a little like, all right. I feel like they had a lot of good ideas at the beginning. And then they're like, hey, we need side missions for the end of the game, too. And they just kind of were like, oh, let's do this. <laughs> let's just throw this in there and stuff. There's a couple. There's one that I did today that, that I'm not going to spoil at all. But the jump scare actually got me. I was like, whoa. I was actually got a little bit of a jump there. It was a little scary. Not going to lie. But uh, I wasn't expecting it to happen the way it did. Um, and honestly, I'm a little. I don't know why. But this game's rated teen, and I I understand because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of violence. There's not any humans that are dying. There's no harsh language. 
But there are like disturbing images of like some of the creatures look like they're on nooses and hanging themselves. And that to me was like, I was like, usually I would think that it would get you maybe an M, but. Yeah, some of the imagery <clears throat> and even some of the stories and, you know, kind of backstories of a lot of the yokai and the, you know, mm -hmm. are pretty dark, you know? And yeah. It's like, yeah, it's kind of weird for having it being a teen rating. Yeah, I I was like I don't I, this must have been varying on the line of like T and M very closely, and I'm surprised that Bethesda wasn't like, hey, you need to put extra stuff in here just a little bit to give it an M rating because I feel like the teen rating weans some people off, especially if they think it's a horror game. I think, yeah, but um, so yeah. but yeah, I, I'm really liking it. I'm up to the last mission, uh, last like story mission. So I'm going in the open world and just like collecting stuff and trying to upgrade my my player as much as I can before I go into the final mission. So um, getting mm -hmm. very very close to beating it. Um, trying to figure out how dedicated I want to be if I want to collect all the souls or not, because uh, there's a lot, there's a ton, and not gonna lie, it's a little boring after a while. So I don't know if I want to get all of them. Yeah, because some of them are hidden in some really crazy crooked corners. You yeah. know, like like you could miss it. You could walk right by it and completely miss it. You mm -hmm. know, if you're not really paying attention. Right. And there there's <laughs> and like they're all on top of these top buildings. So if you fall off a building and you have to go look back up, you'll have to go find a building you can climb up to go jump across different buildings to get to get those. It's I, yep, yep. supposedly there's a different ending when you collect them all and I'm almost curious as to what I need to do to get the platinum because if I don't have to collect all the souls to get the platinum I'll probably just just watch the ending on YouTube watch the other mm -hmm. ending on YouTube that's a sin I'm sorry but I I don't have time for all that I don't have time to collect 204,000 souls how many hours do you think you're in? 20, I believe. 20? Okay. Yeah. I believe that's where my that's counter's good. at. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good for like a completionist route, like not too long. Yeah. I read that it was like 18 and a half on how long to beat, and I was like, maybe. And I don't know how much like time it was me not paying attention or uh, walking away from it, but I'm at 20 hours and I still feel like I have a lot to go. Especially with mm. collecting everything, so we'll see. We'll see, but that's it for me. Cool. Okay. All right. You're up, uh, Stoy. Um. Yeah. I uh. I was playing Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm not nearly as far. I've only played a little bit of it, but uh, I um. I ended up uh, picking up Kirby, Forgotten Land for the Switch, and uh, that game is surprisingly fun. It kind of makes me wish like PlayStation could like kind of turned something into astrobots like because that tech demo that they had for the playstation 5 was like awesome it was like a full yeah, fledged game like a, a really yeah. good game and, and one of the easiest like, one of the easiest platinums that you can get in like two hours <laughs> oh yeah for sure and then even like the uh the astrobot uh vr game was like amazing like it was so, it, that game was so cool to play um but uh i was um yeah, I'm kind of like a few hours into Kirby, kind of obsessed with kind of getting all the waddle -dees and completing all the challenges and, you know, kind of have, you having to go through the mission like a couple times just to kind of get everything, you know, yeah. which is fine because like the level design is like so good. Like Nintendo has this magic with kind of creating some great levels. I mean, because this, this definitely reminds me of like, you know, Mario. And I would say this reminds me more of like, Super Mario 3D World of just kind of like a little bit of like changing isometric uh, camera angles and, you know, platforming and then some crazy little other, you know, some crazy sequences too. Um, but man, that, 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 that Kirby, man, why, why, why does he choose violence as like his default yeah. option for everything? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, like the beginning of the game, like all of a sudden they give Kirby a gun. Like right away in the first like half hour of it, they give him a gun. Yeah, I, I saw that in somebody's review. And he started blasting people. Then you can level up all your little abilities, your, your copy abilities. 
And then all of a sudden, like, the first level up for that is now he's got two guns. Now he's dual wielding. And, man, it just was crazy how, like, he, like, you know, lands in this foreign world. And his his first instinct is, like, once he starts seeing people, is just violence. Like, he's just, like, the <laughs> all these cute little animals got to go. All these cute yeah. animals got to go. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, cuz I um cuz I did see like the I did see like the opening when he encounters the the dogs for the first time and yeah. man, I'm sorry, those things are cute as fuck. Yeah, yeah. but they I are. mean like okay, all right, they'll get like the little angry eyes and they'll come and attack you or whatever, but But like, they're still cute. They're still cute even yeah, even in that even in that phase. Well, you well, know like you could the... like like there's levels where like they're sleeping underneath a tree and stuff like that and you're like, "Oh, that's cute." I'm yeah, they're not fucking with you. I'm gonna fucking kill them. <laughs> or like there's enemies that are like not posing a threat to you. They're just kind of Roaming around, just like, hey man, I respect your distance. If you could just like not mess with my, not mess with what I'm doing here, I'll let you go. But no, Kirby just has to choose violence all the time. Be like, yeah. you're an obstacle in my way. You have to die. Like, what the hell, Kirby? <laughs> so I, I think, think Kirby's Kirby, jealous. This sounds like a, this honest, sounds like I, a good. I, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> you, we, we, like we say, I, I I put up a boss rush banter to say who's one of video games' greatest villains, and I said Mario. Because that, that that man chooses violence all the time too, like you know, he's he he's destroying cities, he's destroying civilizations, he's throwing things in the pits, setting things, setting enemies on fire, just, kicking shells yeah, everywhere, kicking shells everywhere, just like yeah. But I think busting, br busting bricks, stomping I think, on. His I think Kirby's up there, man. I think Kirby's up there. One hmm. violent motherfucker. Yeah. But otherwise, always... um. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, no, I read something the other day that was like, why is Kirby games like easier? It's because they make Kirby so cute that they don't want anything to kill him. And I was like, why do you give him other cute creatures to kill, though? Why not make these creatures ugly? So it makes me feel like, oh, that, <laughs> why, why like do you have to make like these you're cute doing dogs something. and everything? Yeah, like, yeah I know. Like, oh, like, I yeah. kind of feel guilty. Like, you're, I mean, yeah. you know, you're in my way. And like, I, you know, and you got this big smile on your face. And like, yeah. man, I just want to leave you be, but like, you can't, you can't like, there was like this, uh, uh, this one level where like you're in, um, you're in a shopping mall or something like that. And like, there's all these enemies that are like in the cafeteria, just sitting and eating, minding their own <laughs> goddamn business, doing nothing. Just like just sitting chilling. on a table, just chilling. All of a sudden here comes Kirby, like a fucking tornado, <laughs> just like demolishes everything. Like, they're like, you're sitting by coins. I need these coins. I need these stars. I need these other things that you're sitting by. Get out of, get out of here. <laughs> Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. Like, man. Kirby is uh, oh, so Kirby, Kirby is, is the menace. Kirby is he, video games' worst villain. So he comes he worst comes as worst he he comes as the stranger in this strange land, and he's the one. <laughs> I know, like, and he's the one that's causing havoc and violence. Yeah, okay, fine. This little, this guy captured like all these other waddledees, whatever, for his own selfish purposes. But what is that any business of his? Okay, <laughs> you just need to kind of like see the opportunity to say this is too much for me to handle. This isn't my land. I'm just gonna dip on out of here, and hope you guys solve it yourselves. <laughs> just, gonna, just gonna exit out of here and just kind of go from there. <laughs> Any other games you had going on? Yeah, I, I ended up actually uh, uh, this afternoon firing up my PlayStation Now service because I <laughs> criminally have never used it. I've only used it maybe once or twice. And uh, I was like, oh, let me see what's let me see what's on here. Let me see what I have access to. So I was scrolling through and there was some there was a lot of shit filler games and there were some decent ones, you know, and uh, I ended up like seeing like, oh, Bioshock Infinite. I mean, let me play that. So I downloaded that, and man, that game is good. That game is that, that, that game was really good. I only played it once when it first came out, and I never touched it ever yeah, again. Yeah, same but, here. Uh, same here. But yeah, I mean, just I, like everything in that first hour of that game is just man. It's it's they really Kevin Levine, man. He 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 does an amazing job of like setting up a story and setting up the universe and the world that you're living in. Like especially when you first get into Bioshock. Uh, when you first get into Rapture, like that sense of awe when you're walking around and he like faithfully recreates it in Infinite of just like you going up into the clouds and then just walking through the city and just kind of seeing the people interact. And man, it's so great. 
and like it looks good like i i think it was the bioshock collection so it's the remastered like playstation 4 version and they made it look real good yeah so yeah i'm uh i'm probably i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try to kind of keep finishing it because like I, I was having fun with it and then i had you know i had to you know, leave it's my favorite <laughs> game of all time i love that game what in- infinite? oh wow really infinite yeah I shot Infinite or Bioshock One. It it changes all the time, but Bioshock Infinite's been my favorite for a while. Mm-hmm. No, it's really Love good. It. Um, yeah, so I I'll probably I'll probably keep going, keep plugging away at it. I don't know, so we'll see. But um, I didn't realize how the um, now I mean it was a pre- it was definitely trying to uh, shed light a product of its time because I think the game takes place in like the nineteen eighteen. Or whatever, and um, the uh, kind of like white supremacy at the time mm-hmm. of just like having them be like a master race, so to speak. Um, and it was interesting. I guess I never thought of it when I first played it. So I wonder if this game was released now, like brand new. Do you think Kotaku would give a shit about it and blast it? Mm-hmm. No, I, I wonder. No, because uh, I feel like. Go ahead, Austin. Go ahead. Well, no, I, I, the game is based on nationalism, which I think now is a a bigger issue than it has been in a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because of news stories that's that's happened the last few years, and so I here here's my thing is when we had a game come out in 2017 that also was kind of around nationalism, but in a cult form. With Far Cry Five, Kotaku got mad at them for not going hard enough. Whereas I think Bioshock Infinite does go harder on it. That it might not get as much flack as like a Far Cry Five did for that for that reason. Mm-hmm. That being said, it's Kotaku and they suck, and they'll probably find some other reason to blast it for. No, they'll, they'll find something. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know that right there basically summed up what I was about to say. So I mean, <laughs> to be fair, Kotaku already said they're not covering Hogwarts Legacy because the game is based off of a bunch of books that you know. Yeah, J.K. Rowling and, said something wow. that somebody didn't so, like one time. So brave of Kotaku! Wow, I know, yeah. I know what so I know. Brave. Thank you for setting the example, Kotaku. Thank wow. you. Wow, wow, that's, that's, that's like so when bad. game game we're gonna boss rush is gonna like all right. <laughs> I'm gonna cover the shit out boss of it. Boss Rush Boss Rush is gonna review the fuck out of it, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll play it. I I can't wait for it to be honest. Like I really, really want to play that game. I know I do we too. got so because we got so many Harry Potter nerds and all these Potter heads out there and stuff, you know. Like, go go Ravenclaw. I'm a Ravenclaw. Yeah, me too. Woo! Are we <laughs> Story, are you Ravenclaw? Because I'm also Ravenclaw. Nope. I am um what's that one? The main one. The big one. Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Uh, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I took the quiz. Apparently, I'm the Gryffindor. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. I thought it would be All Slytherin. Right. I really did. But. Yeah. I thought I was going to be Slytherin, too, actually. I I, I thought I was going to be. Too. I thought I was going to oh, be well. a Hufflepuff. <laughs> actually, if anybody I, should be a Hufflepuff in this group, it's Austin. <laughs> Probably. But. <laughs> didn't see it. No, I, I, My, I, thought, I thought it was interesting to kind of um you know like we we obviously have to understand you know that you could use um racism nationalism and supremacy in storytelling mediums that yeah. you know it, it's like yeah these were real and we can use those as storytelling mediums in an entertainment medium and this is where a lot of people have trouble separating art from you know yeah, yeah. Art from like kind of like dramatic themes like that to where people say you can't put that in the video game. You know, I remember the whole big hubbub about uh, the Mafia Three developers. Oh, um, God. You yeah. know, when they really painted the racism at the time, and it was like, but it's a fictional game; you don't need to put it in there. And it's like, well, yeah, but keep in mind, you're playing your main character, the character you're playing as a black uh, vet- war veteran. So not only was he coming back from Vietnam and he was already being ostracized for being a Vietnam vet, he's also a young black male. So that mm-hmm. that was, you know, huge for him mm-hmm. to overcome yeah. at the time. And we need to kind of like see that as like you're not having fun 
doing that. Uh, you know, uh, Austin, you know the scene where, like, you have uh, on the stage at Bioshock Infinite, you have the interracial couple, and you have the choice to either throw the ball at them or throw the ball at the announcer. <laughs> But um, the, the sad thing is, either way, you get stopped. So yeah, either way, you to get stopped. But there. like, but like, it was the second or third time that I was like, I'm gonna throw it at the guy, even though I know what's gonna happen. And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, as far as um, as far as I go, um, I didn't get a chance to play a lot, and it's it's bad too because in my write up, I did put that I was going to continue some more Ghostwire Tokyo, but I was also going to continue Mass Effect because story you and I have to do our thing real soon on that. Mm-hmm. Um. And, uh, and so I didn't play any of those games. I didn't play Monster Hunter, but I did turn on Nintendo Switch Online and play a good, solid hour of Shining Force for the Sega Genesis. Did you get your Genesis controllers off the no. website? No, I didn't. Oh, man. Yeah, I, no, I played I played in handheld mode. Mm. Yeah. I'm quite yeah, excited. I did handheld mode. I just, I just acquired a Sega Nomad over the weekend. Ooh. Oh, snap. Look at you. Yeah, one of the, yeah, one of the buddies I was out with on... Um, Hey, on a Saturday battery, night. Yeah. Hey, battery technology's come a long way. Let us know how long that bastard lasts now. Uh, I don't have a the game I, gear. I don't have a battery pack for it because you need a battery pack to attach oh. to the back of it. Otherwise, oh, really? you have to like keep it plugged in the whole time. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> kind of so fun. you have to be tethered. You have to be yep. tethered. Yeah. Mm. So you have to buy a separate battery pack, and I think it's like six AA batteries. Uh-huh. It has to have to be used to power it up. So. Mm. You know, what? I think I might want to talk to you later because it sounds like it sounds like you're in that. You sounds like you're in the good part of the emulation scene. And I'm thinking about I, I'm thinking about getting one of those standalone emulators, so I don't. So I have to keep doing stuff like like tricking out my Vita. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, I hate to say it. As soon as I get an OLED switch, my my OG switch is up an emulation device. <laughs> I well, mean, that's, why not, um, though, right? There's the appeal of uh, a lot of people are buying the PSP Go, mm-hmm. you know, just as oh, an emulation yeah. device, especially yeah, yeah, since yeah. they're going to be shutting down the store pretty soon. Yeah. Um, or un- felt- unless they did already. Did they? The PSP. Uh, PSP? No, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to happen. Yeah. In, uh, wait, I thought it happens in June. I thought it was already down. The PSP. I thought, it was, I thought it was already down. But Maybe I the mean, PSP one is down. Maybe the PSP one is down. But yeah, like a lot of people have been uh, buying those PSP Go's. And mm-hmm. modding them, so like they're going for like three hundred dollars at like, you know, uh, at, at these like video game retro sellers. Like it's batshit crazy. I mean, that's not too high over the over the original price because they were they were what they weren't two hundred. No, they were two hundred. Right? Yeah, they were they were two hundred. Yeah, when I yeah. when I bought mine, I, I paid two hundred for it. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean that's that's the appeal of the Vita. It's the appeal of the, a lot of people are doing that with 3DSs. Like, you know, you could just jailbreak it with some, you know, good homebrew Yo, software. And... Jailbreak, jailbreaking the Vita right now is so easy. Like, oh, yeah. Um, like, it's so easy. Like, a couple of years ago when I looked in it, it was like, it, it was basically like, you know, like you have to like get drafted to a war, you know, and, and put your time in, you know. It's so easy now, you know, yeah. stuff like that. You know, not that we're condoning that because, you know, like people like the pirate games and stuff, but, you know. Well, I mean, like I said, if, if we have video game companies, and this is a whole separate topic that I'm sure you want to talk about, is that mm-hmm. if you have these game companies that don't give a shit about backwards compatibility of their own software, someone has to keep that going. Mm-hmm. The, fact yeah, yeah, that, the, the, the fact that you guys will not be able to enjoy the masterpiece that is Fast and the Furious Crossroads. <laughs> Why do you keep me, cursing our name sad. with that game? It's sad that you guys can't experience that. Because they're taking it off the storefront. Oh, oh man! It brings a tear to my eye. It brings a tear to my eye. And I mean, I'll it's loan so you the sad. physical copy of the game, but I hesitate to do that because, you know. I mean, I'll be honest. If I ever got that physical copy from you, I would not give it back. It, it's such a good game that I don't know when I'd ever have the time to send it back to you. That's why I hesitate I, to just hand it out like that. You know. By the way, Austin, don't you have a uh, don't you have the Paper Mario game for Switch? I do not. I okay. want to get it whenever it's on sale, but I do not have it. Okay. Oh, that's no, no. You're trying to you're trying to coerce me into buying it because you know. Yeah, as as I, I buy want the you game, to buy it. So off. go on sale. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> All right. Well, it's time to go ahead and start talking about the new, uh, the new and notable games releasing for. Well, the notable games releasing for PlayStation, PC, and Xbox for this week. That is the week of April the fourth through the April the tenth. So uh, let's get let's get right into it, guys. Um, yeah. All I gotta say about this week is the force is strong with this week's releases. Oh uh, God! Did you rehearse that line too? Uh, it's all part of my write up for the yeah. article for, for this. <laughs> I, I, I hate I I'm I keep derailing you every time you do this and I I'm sorry I'm sorry no 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 it's it's okay it's okay stay I can in be, your element stay in your element I, I can be a little more original I I'll do I'll do it just for you I I can change story I can no change. that's original that's original I don't want you to change who you are <laughs> oh boy see following your is as big as mine see following up the you. release <laughs> stop it stop it America, Schwartz has been tangled together. <laughs> Following up from the release of MLB The Show 22 from last week, we see the epic returns. Uh, in, we see some epic returns in gaming with the release of a fan favorite Lego series, as well as a beloved RPG game making its way into next gen. Uh, here are the new games coming to PS5, PS4, PC, and Xbox this week across both physical and digital formats that you can. Uh, and just remember, always stop by here. We'll always keep you in the know what's new, what's available. What, was noteworthy because uh because some of the games that come out are you know not really noteworthy but you know we might mention them anyway let's just put it that way <laughs> all right uh today april the 5th we have lego star wars the skywalker saga saga Ooh, saga yeah <laughs> i've been i've been watching a little bit too much avatar last airbender you've been watching avatar <laughs> yep <laughs> uh also coming uh the, the Skywalker Saga is on PS5 and PS4, uh, uh, but also is available on Xbox Series X, PC, and Xbox One. Uh, we've also got the game Replica coming out on PS4. Uh, that's also available on PC and Xbox One. And then we've got Legal Dungeon uh, for the PS4, and also, as well as X, Xbox One and PC. Uh, we don't need to really talk too much about Lego Star Wars. We already know it marks the return of the franchise that kicked off the Lego video game series with Lego Star Wars itself, not so much Skywalker Saga. Uh, but the game basically, the game basically folds up all nine movies into one game. So there you go, guys. You know if you, it if, looks gorgeous. It does. It it does. If you're a, if you're a Lego gaming fan and a Star Wars fan, this is this is your game. Uh, Repli Replica is an interactive novel game that that's played through a cell phone and social media. So for all you people that do walking sims, there you go. And Legal Dungeon is a uh, is a kind of like a it's a hybrid game basically. It's like a crime and punishment game with a labyrinth dungeon crawling game. You might want to mm. check it out. <laughs> mm. Might want to check it out. Uh, on April the 7th, we have the Ultimate Edition of Godfall on PS5, PS4, as well as series Ooh. Xbox Series X, PC, and Xbox One. I know Austin is not too thrilled about that. Uh, we also have Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers Edition, coming out on PS4, as well as PC and, uh, and Xbox One. Uh, Orcs Must Die 3, Tipping the Scales DLC, is coming out for PS5, PS4, Xbox one and pc and then we've got some other games that are, that are notable con uh, including slipstream which is a racing game influenced by influenced and inspired by the outrun series as well as other sega games in general uh check that out for real it's on ps5 and ps4 and also be on ps pc and xbox one uh <sighs> With the with the Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers edition, it's the remaster edition of Chrono Cross, even though it's not a remaster in the vein of Final Fantasy VII. So there you go. I'm still getting it, and I love the hell out of this game. One of my favorite games, one of my favorite RPGs from the PlayStation. Chrono Cross was not Chrono Cross disappointed me so bad because I am a, Chrono Trigger is my second favorite Square Enix game. After that, well, before that, it's Final Fantasy Tactics. So Final Fantasy Tactics, Chrono Trigger, and then Xenogears. You know, those are my favorites. Those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, but Chrono Cross, like, I was so hyped for it. And when it came out, I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to love it. I did not love it. And therefore, I didn't really play it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. I mean, you know, I know I, it's actually a very divisive game. There's a lot of people that I know that don't like this game at all. But 
Yeah. Man. Yeah. Un- yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, but, um, but yeah, the cool thing about the cool thing about maybe I'll give it a chance. I don't know. Maybe now that I'm more mature. You ain't going to like it. You ain't going to like it. Like it's, Damn, it's, it's, hard, it's like... hard to break that nostalgia feeling of like when you play a game the first time and then you hate it. And then like to try to like, Oh, maybe if I give it another chance, I've never mm-hmm. heard of anybody say I gave it a second chance and I actually really liked it. That's I've definitely had that before. I've had that before. Okay. Where you what? Where what you 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 gave it a second like, chance like later on? Yeah, like I've had and, games and where you like and you wound up liking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. I'm because because I I think it's mostly because like what if you're in the mood to play that ter- certain type of game at that time? Because I've mm-hmm. had games where like. Oh, it's this big open world. Like, um, I'm trying to think. I think Assassin's Creed Origins. Like the first time I played that, I was like, I don't like this game at all. Like, I don't like it mm. at all. And then came back to it when I was in a mood to play an open world game, and I actually liked it then. So I think it. But with RPGs, if you, especially at that time with Chrono Cross, where all these RPGs were coming out, I feel like if you didn't like it, then you probably aren't gonna like it now. I would think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, the 3D models uh, have been upgraded to HD, as well, and new illustrations have been added to the game overall, and all kinds of new features are added are also included now in the game. Uh, also, the um, uh, the game that formed the bedrock of the story it's called Radical Dreamers Le Tresor Le Tresor Interdit is included in this edition. Now I'm not sure did, did this it's game get did this game oh it's thank a text based game. Thank you, yeah. thank you, because I was curious and I didn't do look up before the show started tonight. <laughs> yeah, it came out on I think um, it, it never released in the West at all. It was strictly Japanese, and uh-huh. uh, it was strictly a Japanese release. But I think it um, came out on like the PC Engine or something like that, or mm-hmm. some sort of PC software. But yeah, okay, mm-hmm. okay, all right, cool. Um, and last up for the, uh, last up for the new games coming out this week, we have on the eighth of April, uh, Lake coming to PS5 as well as uh, S- uh, Series X, PC, and Xbox One. All right, Lake. This is a game that was on which of the? It was on. Was it on the PlayStation Indies show? Was it was, was on that uh, one? It was on. It was a Game Pass. Yeah, it was a Game Pass game. Oh yeah, it was on a game. It was a Game Pass game. Uh, here's here's a quick synopsis of it. I'm I'm recommending anyone everyone try this game out. Uh, it's, sep- it's September the first, nineteen eighty six. Forty uh, something Meredith Weiss returns from the big city uh, to her quiet hometown during her two week stay in the in beautiful Province Oaks, Oregon. She runs into a few familiar faces as well as plenty of new folk. Uh, as Meredith, you get to decide who to talk to, who to befriend, and perhaps even start a romantic relationship with. Whatever happens at the end of her stint, she will she'll have to make up her mind. Return to her demanding job in the big city, or stay in the town where she grew up in. Uh, that game had some phenomenal reviews. Um, I would definitely say this might be the one to check to check out. Uh, but there are definitely a, a few other games in this list for this week that are definitely no, notable. So check it out. Um, a complete list of the upcoming games for all systems can be found on our website, bossrush.net. Just follow, just follow the link for the uh, notable games for the week, and you will find it. Uh, and please note, release, release dates are subject to change. Things happen. Things have to get changed. Things have to get removed. Somebody gets butt hurt, and something needs to be pulled out, stuff like that. Just, just note, release dates are subject to change. Uh, real quick, guys. Uh, which this week's uh, I already know Story's answer. Which this week's which this week's releases have you have you most excited about purchasing? <laughs> I'm gonna pick um, up Slipstream. Actually, I'm actually pretty excited for that. I like that kind of like old school, like Outrun, Top Gear. Um, it it looks it looks so much like it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Horizon Chase Turbo is kind of similar. Um, that was a game that was made like I think like four years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of it great. followed that same formula. Yeah, that game was awesome. Like, you know, straight out of like Outrun and Top Gear too. So this is like kind of a little bit more retro, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm in. Mm. All right. What about what about you guys? What say you guys? Uh, uh, go ahead. Corey. Oh, go ahead, Austin. Um, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna wait on Lego Star Wars. I've I've been buying way too many new games here lately. <laughs> it's because Austin's gonna be pl- it's because Austin's gonna be hiatus. playing the shit out of Godfall Ultimate Edition. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on a hiatus <laughs> from buying new games for for a good while now. After these last oh couple sure months. oh sure these last couple months he says that so. But this I will. Guy. Well, <laughs> let, let's be clear. I'm gonna get Switch ports. But other than that, that's the only one that I, I'm. But I plan on getting Lego Star Wars eventually. I will actually want to wait till I get my second controller because even because Katie saw the commercial for this and she's like, I want to play that. So I was like, Well, I'm I'm basically waiting to find a purple controller. Naturally, I've only mm-hmm. seen every other color except purple. Mm-hmm. So. We'll see when I find one, but uh, so I'll, I'll get that eventually. I'll get Chrono Cross eventually, but I'll wait till it goes on sale. To be quite honest, I will definitely play Lake, uh, but it's going to be on the back burner for a while. I've been look. I've had that game on my Game Pass for a long time. And I just never did it. Um, but Escado's it's surprisingly possibly. relaxing. Like it's. I mean, when you think about it, like you're just delivering mail most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and that. It's, I got to be in a certain mood for those kind of games, but it does happen where like I just want to play a game where I can just kind of relax and do whatever. Weirdly enough, that's Kirby right now. <laughs> Kirby's like a relaxing game just to go just to go through. Um, but there is a shoot 'em up on this list. Uh, I looked at the trailer and I'm not. Are you talking about a Shatos? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. that looks good. That looks good. I I I, I didn't mention it, but Shadows is uh coming out from coming out for PS4 and is and is also on PC. Uh, basically, if you like freaking like shooters, and now I'm not talking about yeah. first person shooters with guns and stuff. I'm talking about yeah. flying Vertical. ships and bullet hell yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, like this is your game. Think think Gradius. Last, well, last year I played Crisis Wing, which was an amazing game. That was the one I played last year, and I I love vertical shootums. Or any kind of shoot 'em ups, really. Bullet hell, I love those games. But this one, I'm not really sold on. We'll see. Just by the trailer, I wasn't really sold on this one. Yep. Uh, Corey, anything jumping at you? I mean, Chrono Cross. I it was like, I think that was like the second or third PlayStation game I ever played. So mm-hmm. I and I have it's like zero nostalgia for Chrono Trigger. So I mean. I don't have that to compare to, and I actually really liked Chrono Cross when I played it. So. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna crucify you. I'm I think. I think you. that's the problem with that game is that it just gets compared to Chrono Trigger too much, and nobody Absolutely. nobody looks at it as its own thing. You know. Yeah. yeah. Why, think, why are y'all? Maybe, why are y'all attacking me? Maybe that name me? heard it. Maybe that name heard it because you could have called it something completely different. You know? Yeah, but I mean, Final well, Fantasy does that all the time. They change yeah. stuff up all the time, and mm-hmm. you know. Well, here's well, here's my here's my question. Um, does it? My whole thing about my. See, maybe I do need to play the game. Maybe I do need to give it an honest shot because maybe I feel you do. Like, I feel like the stuff that made Chrono Trigger magical is not in this game. Yeah, really, is it? I, I think it's just different because I don't have nostalgia for either one of them. But I don't, I, I I don't like mind Chrono I don't mind Trigger difference more. I don't, I don't mind different. But I, mean, I don't. I love I love I Super Mario Two is the best Mario game of, of the old school stuff in my opinion. But right, but what I'm saying is like, it's like Final Fantasy Nine and Ten. Like I feel like they're two totally different styles of games. There, I don't. Well, I don't even know all if I the different ever versions compare. of Final Fantasy Thirteen. Yeah. I yeah, I don't know, but I like both but, of them. I definitely think Trigger is a better game, but I I will I will I, I will cross. figure it out. I will figure it out, and I'll let you guys know. Can't wait to hear your thoughts, Leron. Oh boy, I will be eagerly anticipating your thoughts on it. You guys act like I'm that cynical person that hosts Nintendo Power Block or something. Whoa! 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 You guys act like you guys act like I'm that dude. What the hell? <laughs> Whoa! You, Look, did, I you up, did a whole two-hour podcast with them the other day. Exactly. That's, true. that's exactly that's that's what that's why I can say what and I'm saying. And then you tweeted right out that said you thoroughly enjoyed it, and you're you happy. Thoroughly to be enjoyed the discourse. Teams. Yeah. What was because it, because because I'm a diplomat. Hmm. <laughs> that's a nice I'm way a of diplomat. saying you're a liar. 
<laughs> okay, okay, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. We're done. We're done with this topic. <laughs> oh, jeez, 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 jeez. All right, all right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. So, uh, on to on to the rest of the news for tonight. Uh, uh, next news topic we have is nobody saves the world is coming to PS5 and PS4. That's awesome right. game. Heard, yeah. Yes. From what I've seen, yes. <laughs> All right. Action role playing dungeon crawler. Nobody says the world is on his way to PlayStation next week, which is uh, by the way, it's April fourteenth. If you want the specific date, and it is equipped with a new feature for games for gamers to wield on, in their adventures. Uh, over on the PlayStation blog, Ian Campbell, who is the lead designer for Drinkbox Studios, the developer of the game, uh, took a moment to inform PlayStation gamers what was coming their way on the fourteenth. Uh, the company's wild, wacky take on action RPGs is described as a silly, sprawling title full of weird characters, bizarre dungeons, and wild quests. Uh, with the power of the wand, you unlock and swap between 15 forms, everything from a guard or ranger to a horse, bodybuilder, or dragon. Uh, in the game, players will journey through a crashed UFO one moment and an overgrown rotten pumpkin the next. There's always a new form, quest, or dungeon to discover, uh, and it's all right around the corner. Uh, <laughs> this game, I've seen the trailers. I have not played the game yet, but I've seen the trailers. This game is whacked. This game is whacked out. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Uh, but it looks... It looks it looks like a whole bunch of like old school old school goodness though like and that's what I'm here for you know uh, it's got that top down it's got that traditional top down perspective um, it's got solo and co op modes um, <laughs> you've got a shapeshifter with a magic wand and basically it, it's 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 insane <laughs> yeah I I played it and beat it on Game Pass and I enjoyed it so much that I was like I plan on playing this game on PlayStation. And getting that platinum because uh, I didn't do the thousand gamer score on Xbox. I'm like, mm. I, I honestly really want to play this again. I really do. It's a fun, fun <laughs> game. Drink box. I also again, like. What is Sony thinking? You could have had these guys. You could have. You could have been investing in these guys, and you let them slip away. What's up with that? What else have they done? Guacamole. They did Guacamole uh, severed. Um, Mutant they blobs. did all those Vita games. <laughs> they yeah. were like the main Vita games, uh-huh. and so I just okay. let them go. Okay. Man, well that's well that's why you know Sony overlooked the Vita. Yeah, well, long live the Vita. Listen, I don't I don't know if I can say I, I'm a I like PlayStation, but I don't know if I can say I like Sony. You know, I don't know what's going on. Someone, <laughs> someone needs, someone is is misstepping. Oh come on, someone come on, else Sony, is misstepping. Come on, Sony is, Sony's been doing you nice lately. Don't don't even try that. Mm. Talk to somebody else until talk, they talk to somebody else off. until they start giving me stuff for free. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Then then that, I'll say whatever fair. they want. I, I, I love you. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Ca- I'm not gonna Captain Save a Ho for, for Sony tonight. <laughs> In that regard, I'm not I love do you, it. Jim Ryan. <laughs> I totally believe that you play games. The latest hit from <laughs> Polyphony Digital, <laughs> Gran Turismo Seven. And I, I hold love the controller Gran like 7. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah, yeah. He's using motion controls, Corey. Everyone knows. Oh that. yeah, sorry. He's he's a great gamer. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the uh, in the in the April fourteenth release of Nobody Saved the World, uh, you also will be getting uh, introduced to the all new local co op mode for for you guys that you know just want to play with somebody on the couch beside you. Uh, two player with two players at once. The potential the potential literally doubles uh, as far as form swapping, ability combining, enjoyment, and unleashing a whole new level of creativity and overpowered combos. Uh, yeah. Nobody Saves the World is currently available now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One, and it will be available on April 14th for PlayStation 5 and PS4. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean, the question is, are you ready to play Nobody Saves the World when it launches on PS4 and PS5? I am going to play this game. You know, I don't know why, I don't know how I like let it slip past me on Game Pass, but I am going to play this game when it comes out. 
Uh, I don't know. If, I think it is off Game Pass now. I don't know if it's still. On I don't. Remember, I don't. I don't remember seeing this on Game Pass unless it never came out on Game Pass on PC. You know that it that could be it too. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a not, console gamer. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> these guys have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that was cool. Uh, definitely check out Nobody Save Nobody Saves the World coming to coming to PS5 and PS4. I'm sorry, I got distracted for a second there. Something just popped up on my screen and it was like, uh, what? <laughs> um, actually, you know what? We skipped we skipped the topic. Yes, <laughs> I thought you were saving that for last. I, I, that's yeah. why. Actually, actually, we can circle back to it. We can circle back to it for last. Actually, it, it, it's, that's actually a good idea. Actually. Uh, Next topic here is uh, there's a new Tomb Raider game being developed, and it's going to be using the Unreal 5 engine. Mm. Uh, the Unreal Engine 5, I should say. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks for Blocks Gaming Reviews from Boss Rush Network for, uh, for, for putting this one out there. Uh, definitely check out the article uh, and get all the information for it. But during Tuesday's State of Unreal 2022, Crystal Dynamics announced that Lara Croft will be returning to a new game built using Unreal Engine 5. Uh, Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider General Manager Dallas Dickinson stated that the new adventure will be high quality, a high quality cinematic action adventure experience. Wow, that is a that is that that's a tongue twister for you right there. Mm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And the team will push the envelope of fidelity. Uh, exactly what developers have in store for the eponymous Tomb Raider is yet to be seen, as no images, gameplays, uh, gameplay, plot details, or release window were given at the time. Uh, 2018's uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was the last game in the iconic franchise to be released. Since then, Crystal Dynamics moved away from the series to develop Marvel's Avengers, as well as to aid Microsoft in developing the reboot of the Nintendo 64 hit first-person shooter game that we know as Perfect Dark. Uh... Unreal Engine 5 is the latest is the latest engine from Epic Games and has proven to be a uh, very popular among developers. Recently, CD Projekt Red revealed that the next Witcher game will be using Unreal Engine 5 as well. Uh, guys, what do you say about this? Yes, give me more Tomb Raider. Yes, mm. Unreal Engine 5 is amazing from what I understand. Yes, I want yeah. more Tomb Raider. I love Same. Tomb Raider. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Too. <laughs> we need more Tomb Raider. And Tomb Raider is the fact that Tomb Raider is going to be one of the big Unreal Engine 5 games where it's going to look so beautiful. Like, I just, those games look amazing on PS4, let alone yeah. mm -hmm. what they're going to do. With yeah. I, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is like one of the best games I've ever seen, first of all. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. <clears throat> Kind of wish well, they yeah, wouldn't announce uh, this, though. <laughs> well, and that's fine. Like, I think we could be accepting of the fact that it's like if a developer comes out to say, "Yeah, we're working on the next game," and then just let it be that. I think mm -hmm. you know we can be patient enough to say, "All right, that's great. That's good to know." I mean, whenever you guys put something out, you put yeah. something out. I wonder. But, if... um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were done. Sorry. Oh, I was. But uh, when I saw the Unreal uh, Engine uh, Five tech demos that they put out today. I was like, man, this is gonna look amazing. Like mm -hmm. what they can do and the level yeah. of realism, mm -hmm. it's just gonna be it's gonna be batshit. Like this game is just gonna blow it out of the water. I actually can't wait for this generation to start. <laughs> Hopefully soon. I uh I mean, Tomb Raider wasn't the only thing that released a video today, right? I mean, the coalition showed off a huge thing mm -hmm. uh and kind of hinted that Gears six is in the works, which I mean of course it is because that's what that studio was built for but uh that's also exciting because they showed off their uh alpha point demo too and like i mean i i wonder if this is just like a marketing campaign for epic to get unreal engine 5 out there and show hey look the biggest games in the world are being worked on uh with mm -hmm. this engine and we want you to come use our engine too uh because i mean gears tomb raider witcher Fortnite, 
uh, those pretty pretty big games. Mm-hmm. And plus, like all of almost all of Xbox Game Studios is using Unreal, right? Like Avowed is and Outer Worlds are being used uh, are using Unreal, uh, and Exiles games are being are, is using Unreal. Uh, I think like. I think Fable is using Unreal. Like, they're just going all out with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, when will they come? How, how long do you think the timetable is? Four or five years? Uh, uh, depends on what games you're talking about, though, I guess. Yeah. What I about mean, Tomb Raider? Raider? Just Tomb Raider. Dude, we're, talking about, Tomb Raider? we're talking about Tomb Raider. It's being, yeah. it's being hinted at, so I'd say, I'd, I'd say a two-year two window. So... Yeah, I'll say two years because Idos Montreal actually did Shadow of the Tomb Raider while they were working on Avengers, and I'm sh- I think Crystal Dynamics has two or three teams because one of those teams is like Laurent said, being rented out to work on Perfect Dark uh, mm-hmm. with Microsoft. So I wonder, I wonder if that they're seeing that roadmap kind of end with Avengers because clearly it didn't take off the way they wanted it to. And they're they're getting in there, you know, pre production, you know, maybe even ramping up production on Tomb Raider now. So I would say Tomb Raider three years. I I would hope I wish it would be two, but three is probably more realistic. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say that. Yeah, I know from what I understand, it's it's easy to develop on this engine, you know. Mm-hmm. So I imagine they, you know, the development time is going to be cut dramatically using Unreal Five. But, uh, you know, they want to make the game awesome, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that when uh, Epic revealed Unreal 5, they said they wanted to cut down development time significantly mm-hmm. because these games are getting so big and so expensive and so time-consuming that mm-hmm. their goal was to make it easier for these developers to make games faster. Um, which is like... I always go back to... Not that this uses uh, Unreal, but Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy, where if they would put out an Uncharted Lost Legacy like every two years instead of a 30 hour experience that was Uncharted 4, it was like, Mm -hmm. that's enough for me. I just want like a solid six or seven hour experience, you know? Oh, yeah. So I like very, I like, I like, I like very digestible chunks of games these, you know, these days, you know, something, you know, Something I you know I can I, if I can get through it in the weekend and be satisfied I'm happy you know yeah mm-hmm. it's a reason it's a reason why like I go back and play like old NES games you know sometimes on the weekends you know I want I want to play something I can play for like one good sit down and you and be and be happy that I got some gaming in yeah I don't see why that's why that why that's a bad thing or why we need to make you know Ubisoft level games that last like hundreds of hours for no yeah. stupid reason yeah no, I, make I put... games too long now. <laughs> yeah, I put seventy hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I'm like a third of the way through. Maybe I was yeah. just about to ask, had you beaten it yet? No, <laughs> no, because there's three caught. endings to it. There's three endings in it. I didn't even like, get to the first you, one. You don't even get the true ending until you beat all three endings and all the other DLC to it. So that game itself is probably like two hundred some hours. Technically, it's, it's still going because they just added a whole quest yeah. line to it that ties into uh, the new game. What is it, Valhalla? Valhalla, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I like Assassin's Creed, but Jesus Christ, give me just a 20 hour yeah. experience. I'll be just fine. Yeah. I thought about going back and playing Black Flag, <laughs> to be quite honest, because at least it's somewhat of a more It's on sale on Switch right now if you really want to, you know, take a crack at it. It's like 14 bucks and you get Rogue and uh, the other one the dlc for black flag mm. uh freedom something freedom cry yeah something like yeah that, that was it yeah freedom cry yeah yeah i don't know if i want to play right. on switch but maybe maybe yes you do but i already have it <laughs> i already have it on ps4 i want to spend 50 dollars okay it's not 15 right, it's 14 so... oh well in that case all right. Well, I can't. I can't wait to see what what comes up. Like, I'm not the biggest Tomb Raider fan, but I do appreciate. I've, I've definitely appreciated them since since the reboot era happened. I've definitely, I definitely love them and stuff like that. So I can't wait to see what's next. Um, 
And you guys ready to talk about uh, the PS Plus and PS Now games? Let's do it. I guess. Let's go. Because because I'll be honest with you, for for a moment there, I didn't think they were. I didn't think they were going to update the PS Now games. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> like, they, they, I was shocked. They when waited you said till that. <laughs> they waited to the last freaking second to like update the PS Now games, like. <laughs> Like it was funny. Like I uh, like I went to bed last night and I and I finally saw that they were announced. And I was like, "Ooh, y'all cutting it kind of close." I mean, all right. S- yeah. Well, I was gonna yeah. say looking yeah. at the at looking at the games. I don't know. I've heard some good things, but it seems like a let's throw those right. in there. <laughs> All right, so the April tw- the April twenty twenty two uh, PS Now and PS Plus games are available right now. Go 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 get them. In the topic. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, this month's uh, this month's batch of PS Plus games is giving subscribers an opportunity to visit Bikini Bottom or become legends in a medieval land or stack the deck in a unique roguelike experience. Uh, and I know Corey already checked out as soon as he heard that word. <laughs> yep, sure did. I heard roguelike. All right. All right. Wait, snapping. wait till you hear the wait till you hear the other part of this game, Corey, because you're really gonna hate it. Oh God. <laughs> is that- it's not just a roguelite. It's I hate it already. All right, so your you so your PlayStation Plus April twenty two games are Hood Outlaws and Legends for PS five and PS four, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Bottle, uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated for PS four, and then Slay yeah. the Spire for PS four. So, um, do we want to expose any of these games? <laughs> I'm gonna try all three. Uh-huh. To be quite honest, All right. but that's in Hood Outlaws and Legends. Uh, the it's a multi it's a multiplayer PvPVE, so player versus player versus environment heist game from Sumo Digital, uh, the, and and Focus Home Interactive. Uh, rival gangs competing in daring heist to to hit help. Uh, I'm sorry, healthy, not healthy, wealthy, to hit the wealthy where it hurts. Uh, equipped with unique skills and uh, mystical abilities each character moves in stealth to steal treasures unseen it's up to you to recruit your band of outlaws master forbidable fortresses and outplay your rivals uh everyone knows about spongebob squarepants and battle uh for bikini bottom so all we gotta say is that yes if you love those games definitely go back and play this It's it's a treat it's a it's a remastered game uh fully remade in spontastic splendor that's all I'm going to say about this game. <laughs> Spongetastic Splendor, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yep, and then we have Slay the Spire on PS4. Uh, if you wish to ascend to the top of the spire, you must choose your cards wisely. <laughs> Embark on a journey of, of, of up the ever-changing spire in this fantastic de- in this fantasy deck builder adventure that fuses together card games and roguelikes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Craft a unique deck from hundreds of cards to uh, to efficiently dispatch foes and reach the top. Discover powerful relics and enhance your deck's powers to help overcome different enemies and bosses. Let's go. Sick. Corey, huh. try Slay the Spire. Try no. it. Pass. <laughs> card, card, card deck building and a roguelike, Corey. Let's yeah. go. come on. It Pass. sounds like fun. That, I want that too, sounds yeah. like fun. Come so, on. Sounds man. like a train wreck. Come yeah. on. Lo- loosen up, bro. I, uh, loosen up. No. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> All Pass. Right. So, a- <laughs> so after leaving gamers wondering whether or not there was a- there would be an update for PS Now following last week's news about the changes coming to PS Plus, the PS Now games for April 2022 have been announced and are available now for subscribers of PlayStation Now. If you're in- and we've got some interesting choices this month for PS Now. I'll say that. Uh, so for PS Now for this month, we have four four new titles hitting the scene. We've got The Outer Wilds as well as uh, WRC Ten FIA, which is World Rally Championship. Why they have to throw so much into that title? <laughs> because it's sponsored by the FIA. Okay, so, you know it's like putting FIFA in FIFA Soccer. Or NBA okay. or NFL, whatever. So FIA is the governing body of racing, so that's why. Got it. Okay. Thanks for thanks for thanks for letting me know that. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm but serious. It, but it is weird because WRC stands for World Rally Championship. World Rally so, Championship. So, yeah. So, yeah. Why would you call it like FIFA soccer? FIFA soccer soccer game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, whatever. Oh, we've also got Journey to the Savage Planet as well as Werewolf: The Apocalypse, Earthblood. Uh, 
Four interesting titles. A Outer Wilds, you explore a handcrafted solar system and unravel an ancient mystery in, in, in Outer Wilds, which is an open world mystery about this about a solar system trapped in an endless time loop. Uh, WRC 10, FIA World Rally Championship. We have to say no more on that. It's a racing game. Get in there. Rally cars. I, uh, if you want if you want a hard, hard, hard racing game, this is this is next level. Like we're talking like you know, you're racing a car this big on a track this big, and you're making split second decisions. It's probably some of the most dangerous racing you can have because you're not you're not stable throughout the entirety of it. Like mm -hmm. I logged in a few hours on this game and it can be frustrating, but <laughs> you know, it's definitely um once you start getting it, it becomes worth it. All right, uh, we have Journey to the Savage Land, which is an upbeat first-person adventure uh, and exploration game set on a bright and colorful alien world. As an employee of Kindred Aerospace, the fourth the fourth best interstellar exploration company, uh, explorers are dropped onto the uncharted planet of ARY-26, uh, a far-off rock filled with danger, mystery, and many smelly alien creatures. Kendrick's explorers uh, have high hopes, but little equipment and no real plan. You have to explore, fight, jump, and sca scavenge, craft, and explode. Yeah, explode your way across the uncharted world to determine if this strange planet is fit for human uh, habitation. <laughs> it already sounds crazy. Definitely, if you have a, if you have a subscription like to PS Plus, give it a try. It, yeah, I, th yeah, I think it, it was good. It sounds like it's going to be fun, you know. Uh, it's got, it's got, it's got a little bit of that sim appeal to it. It's got that survival appeal to it, you know. There's something for everyone in this one, and uh, and in Werewolf: The Apocalypse, Earthblood, uh, you embrace the power of the werewolf. Uh, yeah, it makes the power of the werewolf. I don't know why I got stuck right there. Uh, return to the aid of your pack using gifts uh, of the Garu, which basically is just a nice, a nice way to say werewolf. <laughs> of, of wolf actually not werewolf wolf uh to take down the twisted machinations of an eagle of eagle eagle wow i can't speak tonight you're right there LeBron. Take, take down the twisted machinations of the evil mega corporation Endron in this thrilling action beat em up oh see how i drop a couple octaves and all of a sudden i can speak now wow what is up with that <laughs> Traverse the Pacific Northwest as man, wolf, or werebeast in this action RPG based on the tabletop role-playing game of the same name. Uh, each form has its advantages. Uh, the wolf can sneak around undetected as a human Kahal can interact with other people. Yeah, Kahal. Okay, yeah, I, I read that correctly. And the werewolf can unleash its rage to tear enemies apart. Use them all to succeed in your mission as an eco-warrior to protect your land. The new additions to PlayStation Now have uh, currently – these new additions to PlayStation Now currently have no departure from the service. There's been no announced date for it. So, hey, like, it looks like it might be permanent for, for a hot minute. So there you go. Uh, all the games mentioned in this segment are available today for subscribers of PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, respectively. You know I got to ask the question. Which of the April 2020, uh, 2022 games will you be playing first, guys? I mean, I played – WRC and Journey to the Savage Planet. So and Werewolf: The Apocalypse is not good. Uh, I heard. Oh. So. <laughs> oh, 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 you, you, oh, you Wilds, heard. You were. Outer Wilds is definitely not my thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, none of the PlayStation <laughs> Now games are my type of game. Uh, to be quite honest, um, I will play Hood tomorrow or this weekend because. That will probably be the only time the servers are full because everyone's going to be getting this game for free, and we'll see who's actually on playing this game. Because yeah. I feel if you wait uh, a week or two, there might not be that many people on there. Just, gotcha. uh, just a hint. So, um, but then I'm definitely playing SpongeBob and Slay the Spire. I <laughs> cannot. I am ready for SpongeBob, man. I love SpongeBob. So, Can we just take a minute and say how cool like a real Robin Hood game would probably be? Like oh, I, this I one? want one. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was going to be it when they showed the trailer at first. I was like, oh, and then they explained what it was. I was like, oh. Yeah. Never mind. A real Robin Online Hood game. Online multiplayer. Yep. Yeah. A real <laughs> Robin Hood game would be awesome. It, it would, I feel like it would be like a mix between like older Assassin's Creed mixed with like maybe Ghost of Tsushima or something. Here, here's an idea. 
take Disney Robin's ho- Robin Hood and let Sucker Punch make it in the form of Sly Cooper and make it Ooh. a Robin Hood Disney game. Let's go. That'd Let's be awesome. Up. Robin Hood is a great movie, by the way. That would be cool. That's, yeah, that's one of my favorite Robin Hood movies. Movies. Yeah. It's like my hey, favorite. When old are you guys movie. getting to it in um, standard definition? I don't know. We're only at this point. We're only we've only recorded. Uh, we were supposed to record Alice in Wonderland tonight, so that's where we're at. Mm. Um, well, let me know. I might join y'all for the for Robin Hood. Hmm. I don't. Know. I do want to join. I do want to join you guys for One Hundred One Dalmatians. Hmm. We watched that recently. Not that good. It's kind of boring. What? Yeah. Get out. The first half of that movie is like really boring. Is okay. Lady in the Tramp still holds up though. Lady in the Tramp is a superior dog movie. Lady in the Tramp? No, Uh, the best dog movie is Oliver and Company. That is is true. true. That is is true. true. But no one watches it. (laughs) I do. We we watched it. You guys, Billy Joel doing the music. Yeah, we're getting off. We're getting off topic, guys. And that was no. We are finally on topic. Nobody cares about PlayStation now. Sounds like we're on topic. We're exactly where we should be. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. So, in our final news topic for tonight, uh, Fire Sprite Studio is making a triple A horror title for Sony. Uh, Fire Sprite Studio. Remember those guys? No. Yeah. No. A lot of people. A lot of people probably don't. That's that's okay. Uh, Fire Spray Studio, which was recently acquired by Sony, appears to be hard at work on a triple A game for the publisher. Uh, over on Reset Era, a user shared a job listing from the from the UK based studio via Fire Sprite's very own website. The listing is for a narrative director for a horror game project that is currently in development and will be running on Epic's Unreal Engine Five. From the job listing, we are uh, from the job listing. It says we are looking for a narrative director to join our development for a triple A narrative driven horror adventure game in Unreal Five. The narrative the narrative director is responsible for project storytelling, <coughs> helping establish a con- uh, and consider the game's universe and lore, with responsibility for the quality implementation of narrative content for the pro- for project milestones, and ultimately the game's release. All right. So, here's the trivia for you guys. Fire Sprite Studio is a video game developer that had first formed in 2012 by former members of Studio Liverpool. Uh, this company would create quite a few uh, titles for Sony, including the Playroom for PS4, the Playroom VR, also on PS4, and PS Vita's Run, Sackboy, Run. This in is September, a weird, t- uh, departure for them, then. Yeah. Not a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Oh, but but wait, there's more. <laughs> in September 20, uh, 2021, Sony Interactive announced that the studio had been acquired, and later in that same month, Fire Sprite themselves would announce that they, that they had acquired Fabric Games, the company responsible for the 2018 game The Persistence. Uh, the company is already being put to good use by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Fire Sprite is currently co-developing Horizon Call of the Mountain for PSVR 2 in collaboration with Guerrilla Games. Um, also, it has been reported that Fire Sprite has taken over development for tw- the Twisted Metal reboot that was under development by Lucid Games and had also poached Lucid Games director, Lucid's game director. Our very own, our very own guy, Corey Deary, actually reported all that. So, so go to BossRush.net and check out his article and give it some love, by the way. You're welcome. As of... As of now, we are all left to spe- speculate what Fire Sprite and Sony Interactive have up their sleeves. But when the news, but when news does come up, be sure to come back uh, and check with Boss Rush because uh, we will have all the details for you, guys. What could Fire Sprite be working on for Sony? It's going to be a VR game. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that's an easy enough. You can point to that and say, yeah, VR. Mm-hmm. Mm. Especially because okay. like they're making such a big deal out of PSVR two and like with those the controllers for PSVR two, they're gonna need like they're gonna need some big games, right? I mean, obviously PSVR was like it was it was an okay hit, but they didn't really have that you know major game for it. I think what Resident Evil seven and Batman. And I guess you could throw Moss in there, right? Like, I mean, they didn't really have that huge, huge must-buy title. Right now we have Horizon, right, which is going to be, 
obviously they're aiming that to be a a must buy and then uh you know whatever this is i think they're going to start making triple a sized titles for this mm. that's a very good that's be. a very good yeah that's a very good point i would love to see a good push for uh especially playstation vr because i feel like you know the first couple years of its life cycle they had banger after banger and then all of a sudden like the last couple years it's just final flat mm-hmm. so I just assumed that Sony was doubling down for the next generation. And it sounds like from all intents and purposes, what I've been hearing is, you know, developers are excited for it. There's a lot of hype around it about what it can do and what Sony is pledging to developers. And yeah, I think we're going to see a pretty damn good horror game in the AAA level on a VR title, which is going to be awesome. Um, I'm, I'm in for it. If they do decide to go VR. Because, I mean, you're talking, mm-hmm. you know, they, the kind of playroom for the VR, they just acquired, you know, Fabric Games, the Persistence, that was VR, and then they're currently working on a game for the VR2. So, I mean, work with yeah. your strengths. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Do I it. really don't, I really don't, I really don't have an opinion on what they could be working on. Like, I mean, um, it, it's, I feel like it's too early to tell. You know, like it, you know, it could go either way, which kind of leads into my next question. Would you like to see Fire Sprite work on a continuation of an already established PlayStation franchise or create a brand new IP? <sighs> if That's they want the... money, work on an established mm-hmm. franchise. You know, yeah. like game would be really cool in VR, actually. It like something God of War related. Mm-hmm. I think, I think there are enough giant monsters that you could go in in vr and like i don't know i I feel like something god of war related would be really really cool in vr Mm -hmm. even if it's not combat related you know even if you went back to the greek mythology you could go and scale mount olympus or something or you know see the the titans and how big they are and you know what i mean like they could Mm -hmm. i think they could do something really cool with that too Mm -hmm. Hmm. God of War would make a good VR title. It would. It would. I was. I was gonna say something. I was gonna say something along the lines of uh of uh freaking um. Fuck the game they're already working on, Horizon. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say that, but you know, like yeah, it's it's it's, it's being put in existence now. So yeah. Imagine um, the imagine the feedback on those VR controllers when you throw the axe and you call it back. Like oh yeah, that would yeah. be, be really cool, cool. Probably at some point. Hmm. Mm. Although I almost yeah. feel like I almost feel like VR, like uh, PSVR worked best when it wasn't a first person game, right? I mean, Moss was from what I heard was like really cool, and it was just this diorama yeah. kind of looking into this adventure, you know. Which yeah. that's what that what uh, the Astrobot uh, VR game was, mm-hmm. um, and even a lot of the playroom stuff. It was all that kind of like. You know, it's still in, you know, it's still third person, but it's like you're kind of the overseer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you VR. think they'll dive into Until no. Dawn at all? I thought about that. That would be kind of cool, actually, because people are actually asking for a sequel for that game. Or whatever. What's what's their new game? Super massive. What's their new game that's yeah, coming out? Yeah, they just put out a trailer for it. I yeah, it was. that could be in VR. Oh, they got, that could be cool. Yeah, I just... Because what I'm thinking is, uh, I think PlayStation still owns rights to Until Dawn itself because Supermassive is kind of doing their own thing now. And I wonder if they would. Because we did get Until Dawn VR games, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they weren't very good. Uh, but I feel like you could still bring that back. And if you sold it as something that is more like Until Dawn, the actual game, instead of this. Uh, on rail shooter game that people would buy into it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a PlayStation f- franchise uh, that is horror that that could be done, but I'm I'm blanking right now. Um, I mean, Resident Evil was exclusive on the PlayStation for a while, and you know we got Resident Evil Seven and Resident Evil Four on the Quest is uh, amazing. So yeah, yeah. 
Does uh does Gran Turismo have a VR mode yet? Uh, Gran Turismo yes. Sport did. Sport did. Yeah, they haven't said and, they haven't said anything terrible. about GT. They haven't said anything about GT Seven getting one. I bet they. Terrible. I bet they get some. It was something. like the the best driving game for the PlayStation VR was Drive Club, because like every race, yeah. it, every track was available. Like the whole game was playable. Whereas with Gran Turismo Sport. They said, oh, "Okay, we only have six tracks that you can race on, and it's all one. It's all you're against one other racer. That's it." It definitely felt like, "Hey, we need to put Gran Turismo on VR. This will get people sell. Let's try to figure out the best way." Because if I remember correctly, you got it with Sport. It wasn't like a separate thing you had to yep. buy. It was just free. And so it was really yeah, just it was sell it was tacked VR. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was cool. Like it was, it was cool, but like. You yeah. know, Drive Club I thought was better graphically, and you got more gameplay re you know replayability on it. And now you can't even buy that game anymore because they took it off the store. So mm-hmm. it really it really sucks what happened with Drive Club. It. Like Drive Club came out so bad, but it, it ended up being really really good. Like I like Drive Club at the end of it. But yeah, it was just a terrible thought- game at the beginning. <laughs> I, I yeah, and they fixed it actually pretty quickly. I think they promised too much, and then all of a sudden, when the game came out, it was like, "Oh, these things that you promised aren't out." What the hell? And you know, yeah. they, it was like a No Man's Sky thing. Yeah, yeah. So, Which No right. Man's well, Sky is on VR. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Huh. I don't know how they could do that. But... They did it. All right. All right, well, um, I think we can go ahead and um, and wrap up all the news and get on to our big topic because uh, it's a fun one tonight. Um, is it? I think, I think it is. I think it is. But what do I know? What do I know? Not much. I just, um, oh, dude, really? Questions. Really? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, here's our here's our big topic for Crossroads tonight. Uh, what is Sony's greatest franchise, and why is it Gran Turismo? Oh, jeez. What? Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Can, can you just... <laughs> Austin's already ready for a fight. <laughs> Who are you? What is this? You could say most important, most financially got... successful. It's but definitely it's it? the best I mean, selling. At this point, though, like, didn't... Gran Turismo Six and Sport not sell great. Yeah, but I think I mean, they basically overall, counted on the first three, like selling let, tons of copies. Let me let me get into the dialogue, and then you'll understand what's going on. Oh my gosh, you're turning <laughs> okay. into Ed. You ask such a vague question, and then you have like a mile. The name, no, the, no, the na- <laughs> no, the name of the topic is what is Sony's greatest franchise, and why is it Gran Turismo? Mm. <laughs> I didn't ask the question, why is it Gran Turismo? <laughs> I podcasted with Ed last night. Okay. I need a... Need a okay, okay. Okay, break. fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, how about this? What is Sony's greatest... Fr- you know what? Screw the script. What is Sony's greatest franchise? Let's let's talk about it, guys. I actually thought the Gran Turismo thing was a joke. I you thought it was a... serious. Yeah, I you thought it was. A, I thought you, you were thought joking, it was a, too. You thought, thought it, was it was a joke? A joke. Scro- yeah. uh, you guys have the show notes, right? Scroll scroll down to the bottom. I don't have the show notes, so <laughs> I put them in the, I put them in the chat before we started. What chat? This chat. Oh, I didn't look at this chat. <sighs> there. <Yeah>. There. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. You know what? Just just okay. Just to I'm gonna use a script for a hot minute, okay? Okay. All right. PlayStation is, as a name is synonymous with what with with the brands that have been birthed from the system. Uh, it's arguably it's arguable that the PlayStation itself as a brand would never have been a, as successful as it is today had it not been for the value it derives from its exclusive games and franchises. Now, I'm skipping the rest of that because when we talk about the greats of the series, like what at the end of the day, what the company looks at is numbers of units sold. So. If we crack into this, some of the best-selling franchises that Sony has had throughout its entire history, uh, we start with Sp- the Spyro the Dragon franchise, with which only did like twenty million. 
but it was enough to put it in in, in, a, in a, at least a top ten list. Uh, the Last of Us as a franchise has done over forty one million games, forty one million units sold. Uh, Tomb Raider, this is the crazy one. Tomb Raider, as far as a PlayStation exclusive, only did twenty six million. Oh, well, over twenty six million. Uh, Spider Man. Which is only one game technically, because Miles Morales, you know, people will argue all day long that it's actually DLC that he decided to make a game. Spider Man Miles Morales combined has over 26.5 million uh, units sold. Um, yeah, Miles Morales itself uh, has has yet to hit 7 million units. Um, so there's that. The Ratchet and Clank franchise as a whole, and this, and I actually had to look these numbers up. This doesn't include like, like the, uh, like the, like the, the Ratchet and Clank uh, bundle, the collection that came out that had the first three games, based off of unit sales for the entire franchise, twenty-seven point one million games. Uncharted, forty point zero two million. Now here's one that's been around since the beginning of PlayStation, Tekken. Mm. You guys are looking at the list right now, but if you were to take a guess, how many how many units do you think Tekken has sold? A lot. While it was a PlayStation exclusive. I wouldn't have thought it had been this much. Yeah. 50 60 million. Game, 50 million. Fighting games are a pretty niche, uh, you know, a niche yeah, they uh, are. genre. They are. Yeah, yeah. but I and mean, yet- are, I mean, people say that, but then you look at Mortal Kombat 11 and it's, it's sold like 20 million units alone. You know, I mean, I feel yeah, like, yeah. I feel like, when people say fighting games are a niche genre, they're like, oh, the hardcore of the hardcore of the hardcore, you know, are amazing at this game. But like everybody owns Street Fighter at some point in their life, right? Everybody's right, yeah. owned a Mortal Kombat at some point in their life, you know, whether you like it or not, you know. Yeah. And then the last of our honorable mentions, well, we had a lot of honorable mentions because there's like a top three. Uh, the last of our honorable mentions was the OG Crash Bandicoot mm. with over 50 million units sold. Uh, the series uh, seemed to have peaked in its critically acclaimed days with Naughty Dog, uh, but then with Activision releasing a variety of titles that never really hit the, uh, that hit the mark. Uh, still, the nostalgia proved to be strong as the Insane Trilogy sold well and the series got a boost to the, to the 50 million plus mark in overall sales. Okay, so that leaves the three the three big hitters that were PlayStation brands. Because yeah, gotta take the note. Like I mentioned, a lot of titles that are that are no longer just exclusive to Sony. Like they they've actually moved on to become multi platform and stuff like that. So think about this, because we have in third place God of War. With 51 million plus units sold to date. And it is guaranteed that God of War Ragnarok will be a huge hit since fans are anxious to have their questions answered from the previous entry. 51 million. This is not the best selling well, this is not the best selling franchise. 51 million. <laughs> yeah. Um keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep okay. going. Okay. Well, I have stuff to say on script. I have stuff to say on God of War, but well, go ahead. Go ahead. This is the time. I mean, so how many did? How many units did God of War the new one sell? Uh, you know what? I can look that up while you guys are talking about it. Because I remember when God of War two came out, that game was like the biggest game on the planet, and it was such a huge deal that it came out on PlayStation two and not PS three. Uh. Okay. God of War. I know God of War one didn't sell much. Like it sold like I think they were happy because it sold a million units. I think the 2018 edition of God of War sold 19.5 million copies by August of 2021. Mm-hmm. The PC The PC version just released. Um, God of War. God of War 2018 PC sales. Watch it. Just give me a. Uh, watch. It just give me a. Um, God of War, it is, so the 2018 one for P, when it got on PC, let me see, as of February 10th, 2022, has sold has reportedly surpassed more than 2 million sales on PC. So that 
So that game by its that game by itself is about to hit twenty two million units sold. Yeah. Okay. That game by itself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a good game. I don't, you know. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just remember God of War, especially when God of War two and then God, when God of War three was shown off. Oh my gosh, people were losing their minds. Mm-hmm. Game was awesome. Let's let's see. God of War yeah, units sold. Okay, in 2012, Complex Magazine named God of War two the best PS2 game of all time. It was the best selling game in the UK during the week of its release, selling two four four point two four million games. I need to see. I need to see worldwide. Don't tell me. Don't tell me this crap. Uh, God of War 2018. Is that what you're looking for? No, God of God of War two. Oh, the, God of the, War two. The PS2 game. Because the PlayStation 4 one in August of 2021, uh, total sales of that one was 19.5 million. Which one? The 2018 God of War. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. But I mean, th- <laughs> that 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 that's all I had. <laughs> Uh, God of War 2 sold 4.24 million units, and that was like a big deal at the time. Yeah, God of War, the original God of War sold 2.33 million, uh, 2.33 million. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but most of the sales of God of War 1 came, like, not most of them, a lot of them came after God of War 2 came out. Mm-hmm. I wonder um, if that I... was like a lot of people's first game. Mm-hmm. Like first entry into God of War. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, I can't find anything in God of War Three. So yeah, there. You know. Um All right. So going back to this, uh in second place is Final God of Fantasy. War Three was five point two million. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yep. Where'd you find that at? Because I was looking for that Wikipedia. all day. Yeah. I was on Wikipedia. It, I'm on I'm on God of War 2's Wikipedia page right now. Okay, I and must I'm not on look. God of War 3's Wikipedia page. Ooh. I must not I must not look hard enough. All right, all right, guys, yeah. stop making me look bad here. It sold all nearly right. 5.2 million copies worldwide by June 2012 and was included in the God of War saga released for the PlayStation 3 on August 28, 2012. In celebration of the God of War franchise's 10th anniversary, a remastered version of the game titled God of War 3 Remastered was released for the PlayStation 4. The next game in the series was God of War Ascension. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, the next game in the talk. series was God of War Ascension, a prequel to 2005's God of War. We can forget that game ever existed. Why? That, that game was, was awesome. On March... No, it's not. Yes, Stop it is. A true sequel simply titled God of War The Reimagines the Franchise, which shifts the setting to Norse mythology, was released on April 20th, 2018. God of War Ascension, Ascension gets a bad rap. Made. I, I, I agree. It didn't need to be made. That's the thing. I agree with that, but it was still awesome. I agree. I agree. I like you played a cool multiplayer to... mode where you could wield giant hammers and just smack giant enemies with th- random people. I really think that's the only reason why they made that game is they wanted to kind of like test test the waters of like a multiplayer yeah. God of War. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, the PSP... because who made it? Ready at Dawn made it. Uh, the PSP games were great too, by the way. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, yeah. All right, so in second place we have Final Fantasy. With over 52 million units sold uh, on this time with PlayStation, remember it's still a PlayStation. It's still a PlayStation seller. All right, having started life as a Nintendo exclusive, Final Fantasy made the leap to Sony's little gray box back in the mid 90s. Uh, there, it esti- there it estimated to have sold over 25 million units alone, with around 40 percent of these coming from Final Fantasy VII by itself. In fact, the series seventh and eighth entries are the second and fourth best-selling PS1 games of all time, uh, respectively. Uh, and those games demonstrated just how popular the series was in the mid in the mid to late nineties. Uh, the series sold another twenty-one million units on PS2 with Final Fantasy X, which ranked fifth place overall in the sales. A Final Fantasy twelve will rank eighth place in the sales, and then Final Fantasy X two ranked eleventh overall in those sales. All among the console's best-selling games. After that, the series went multi-platform for a while, though Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XVI, both being PS uh, PlayStation exclusives at the time of right now, <laughs> its current status isn't clear. So, Final Fantasy, 52 million. All right. So, originally I asked, 
was was PlayStation's greatest franchise and why is it Gran Turismo? Gran Turismo across its lifetime of being a PlayStation exclusive has sold over 80 million units. Hmm. 80 million units. Yeah. I mean, Gran, uh, uh, Gran Turismo 3 for PS2 was a huge deal. That game was... I, I'm i not a racing game person, and I played the crap out of Ace Back. Like that game mm-hmm. was that game was a huge yeah. deal, and I remember Gran Turismo Four was a big deal as well. Like that, those games were massive hits on the PS2. Um, I don't really know much about Gran Turismo Five, but I do know three and four were huge. Yeah, I would say three was probably the best. Uh, four, you saw a drop in the amount of cars. You know that were available, mm-hmm. and I think the the kind of the series started to kind of dip a little bit in form from there. Um, mm-hmm. I know the PS3 version was kind of, eh, I mean, it was okay, but yeah, obviously, I think Gran Turismo Seven is the best it's been me personally since three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. I would also say that this is not including Gran Turismo Seven numbers, so it'd be yeah, Gran Turismo, yeah, because um, because I honestly don't think Sony has actually put out an, an official sale of the numbers i know mpd has something but you know uh gran turismo 7 is still kind of a dude like if we had gran turismo 7 in right now it's it i guarantee you it's over you know what oh, you know what? before i even guesstimate let me just try and see if i can find my 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 question is is do we want to yeah you could say gran turismo has 80 million sold more over the franchise but they have seven games that are accounting to that 80 million with mm. one through six and Gran Turismo score. Dude, dude, so do we want on, to do the dude, averaging out? Are we doing Final Fantasy? There's five games that are exclusive. So that's hold like on, hold, 10 on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got, we got, we got seven. We got tactics. We got eight. We got nine. We got 10. We got 10, two. We got 12, uh, 13. And the two other sequels from 13, uh, Shoot, Final Fantasy Eleven what, was uh was well, on PlayStation as well, right? Yeah, it wasn't exclusive. Yeah, that's why I'm but saying still, it, these are only exclusive adds, games, right? Well, no, it's no, and it's not exclusive. It, it adds to the pile. <laughs> oh, okay, it adds to the pile because because I was saying because I'm thinking like would that make FIFA EA's biggest franchise? Like. Uh, because I mean, I thought I, mean, I thought is. FIFA I it thought is. FIFA sold I thought FIFA sold better on Xbox than it did on on PlayStation though. Well, I, no. I could have sworn it did. Well, that no. they, that that was the reason why the PlayStation Two was around for so long. Yeah, mm-hmm. because uh, yeah, I mean, PlayStation or PlayStation is the biggest console in Europe, which is where soccer is obviously the biggest sport, right? And mm-hmm. Uh, that's funny that's funny the uh the vg sales uh the vg sales uh, uh okay no i did go to a wiki and technically it does have dot fandom.com in there mm-hmm. it does have that but i didn't even see fifa in there unless i just overlooked it i'm looking at it now yeah fifa i don't see i don't see fifa anywhere on this fifa is definitely ea's biggest game though by far by a you know, long but mile. would you say but, is that their greatest franchise I mean, what Gran Turismo? No, FIFA. I personally, oh FIFA, oh, because by this, by your conclusion, with Gran mm-hmm. Turismo being the greatest franchise for PlayStation because of the eighty million, would that make FIFA EA's greatest franchise? Would that make? I think it would. If, yeah. Actually, wait, I wait. So you're telling me FIFA sold more units than than some of their Call of Duty games? Oh, absolutely! Well, yeah. Are you kidding me? That's not EA, but I'm sure at some point FIFA was outpacing Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think like in the heyday of Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare and Black Ops, you know, those games were outselling everything like (laughs) tenfold. But FIFA sold 325 million copies. And Call of Duty is on 400 million as of last year. So, yeah, maybe Call of Duty's not EA. Yeah, that's true. So, oh, that is surprising. I thought FIFA would be selling more, but uh, it is in more countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if it's just like a revenue thing for them, like for EA. Yeah, it's obviously their biggest revenue bringer. Like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. 
Uh, I, because I go ahead. I thought this topic was going to be fun, y'all. Y'all, but this is, well, I, we're, we're well, honestly we're bogging it down with numbers. I really but honestly you, thought this was going to be kind of like what was the most respectable um, franchise. In, well, we can come in, back. In, we can come back and yeah. we can come back and do that. As a matter of fact, I would definitely say let's pin that for a place for a crossroads plus topic. Okay, I really honestly yeah. thought that's what we were going to be segueing into. I mean, that, if we're gonna if we're gonna answer your question, what is Sony's greatest franchise? It's definitely Gran Turismo. You know, mm -hmm. it sold the most out of any franchise they have. But yeah. and we and we can't also, really yeah. count. It's also Boy, the I'm done. It's also the the IP with the most longevity, right? I mean, you they, you see all these studios trying something new, trying something different, uh, and then Gran Turismo has been around since the beginning, and it's the only game that Polyphony Digital works on, right? It's just right. It it there's a reason why it's been around for 25 years or whatever at this point. Man, I swear you guys sound mad. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm just giving no. my opinion. I'm mad. You you put out a thesis. <laughs> you, you're putting That's it out. Boys mad. Statement. Too many numbers. <laughs> but I I would say that if you if you're looking at numbers, which I assume this was what it was about. Last of Us. Okay, I can already. I can already tell. I, for I can already tell. Two, I can already games. tell you. I can already tell you, like the automatic fanboy reaction. If we were, if we were to go, if we were to go right now onto on, onto the Crossroads Twitter and put a poll out there, the fanboy reaction would automatically say God of War. No, I think the fanboy reaction would say Last of Us. No, the no, first one. No, no, the first no. one. The franchises, the the franchises, not the I games. Think, I think God of War probably would now before Last of Us Two because. Even the yeah. Sony fanboys started hating Last of Us Two for no good reason, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, being objective and stuff like that. I would, I would say for sure, and nobody would be objective enough to, because like everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna, like, look, we just had, we just had an argument. Well, not an argument, but but we basically had discourse about Chrono Cross being better than Chrono Trigger. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> We never I had it. We never had a discussion about Chrono Cross being better. Than yeah. Chrono okay. 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 Maybe maybe that was just me being all up in my feelings. <laughs> you need some new feelings. Oh, yeah. You need, oh. You, you need to go to the feelings oh, store. Oh. 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 See that? Go to the feeling store. See that? You know what? It's it's time to wrap this show up. <laughs> Already? Oh man. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. Was the, what was the final answer? Did we? Are we just giving it to Gran Turismo being? The best <laughs> franchise? I mean, we might as well at this point, right? I mean, 80 million. You can't Sony's, lie with the numbers. Sony's greatest franchise <laughs> uh, right now, based off of numbers, quantitatively speaking, it's Gran, it's Gran Turismo. Now, that being said, that's probably not Sony's fan favorite franchise, but at the end of the day, like Sony's not ready to drop Gran Turismo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, racing games are like it. It's a different category of gamer, almost. I mean, not, don't get me wrong. Like people who play God of War probably enjoy Gran Turismo, also. But I mean, like a lot of people buy consoles for Gran Turismo, and that's it, right? A lot mm -hmm. of people buy Xboxes for Forza Motorsport, and that's it, right? I mean, people build these huge giant rigs with the oh the consoles in them to play these games. So what should we did should we discount those people? No, I'm saying I'm saying it's a it's a it's a specific kind of game that makes a lot of people happy because it's so good and that's what they look forward to. That's why they buy these boxes, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a console seller just like why they put Gran Turismo VR mode. The mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. because it would yeah. sell VRs. Yeah. And for that you there's no doubt that like Gran Turismo is the biggest and you could say greatest franchise, but I just argued that if you're doing best overall franchise, I don't know. I don't know if I could say that. It comes down to personal feelings at that point, yeah. or you can go Metacritic scores or you can go. Yeah. How many games they've turned out. And See, I'm too lazy. To, I'm too lazy to look for all that stuff. <laughs> if you guys want to do it. <laughs> you're welcome I, I, to do it. The only thing that threw me off though was, Last of Us, 41 million, 
and there's only two releases, and three if you want to count the remaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's you know, you know. Okay, so million a game or thirteen million a game, depending on how you do it. So in my small little write up, when you know I thought we were going to have enough time in the show to do this, uh, The Last of Us sold more as a remaster on PS4 than it did as a brand new game on PS3. Uh, and despite just consisting of two games, The Last of Us franchise has sold more than 24 million copies worldwide. So would that make The Last of Us 2 17 million? Which is insane. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. That's La- number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that to me is what stands out to me because that means like Gran Turismo releasing seven games out of the eighty million. It both of those games sold more than any Gran Turismo game if you just average it out. I don't know what the highest selling game is. It probably isn't though. Awesome. You also got to remember that. You also got to remember though, like Gran Turismo, like Gran Turismo two and Gran Turismo three were given away with consoles, so. Not just the unit sales units by sold, themselves. Though. Yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say, not just, not just as the games themselves, <coughs> like they help, they help sell units too. Like I mean, like consoles, you know. That that's why I argue that Last of Us could be an argument, and I, I'm like I like Last of Us, but it's not my favorite. It's it's somewhere in the top ten of my PlayStation franchises. But I will, that, I will like, be. Com- I will be totally honest with you. Out of all these games, there were all these ten game franchises that were mentioned tonight. I'm an Uncharted person, and I was shocked that Uncharted hasn't even hit 50 million copies sold. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of ha- surprising. Yeah, and it has, and it has a lot of games. <laughs> what it has? What six mainline entries and then a collection? It has. It has six mainline entries. It had. It had. It had six mainline entries. It had that card game. Oh, Let's yeah. see. Fight Uncharted. for Fortune. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know if those count, though. You that think the count. Fight for Fortune counts? No. 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 I don't think it did. I was I wondering if Golden Abyss counts. I, I bet you they don't even count plays Vita games. They don't care. <laughs> they don't why, care. They, they, why, why wouldn't they, though? Like, like you know, like, shit. Like, you know, I guarantee you. Um... <laughs> because then they have to admit is that it... the Vita exists, okay? And they're not Wait, going to admit it... that it exists. Is it an exclusive, though? <laughs> it is, but they it do is. not want to talk about the Vita no more. So they pretend like Golden Abyss does The scouts. Vita, the Vita is like this Bad. little. Bad. The Vita is like this little handheld that if a couple people in the back room were like building, and they and they went to say, "Oh, let's get these manufactured for real." And instead of five, they somebody hit ten zeros on there, and like, "Oh no, we actually sent this to manufacturing. Crap! Now we got to sell it." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not. I did not realize I was going to cause so much hate and discontent tonight. I'm. I'm so sorry. There's no guys. hate like, and discontent. You know, how are you going to put out a statement and then not expect any any you? How are you going to put out a statement? Yeah. And then just be like, you know, oh, I'm right. You, I'm right. You know, That's all you're going to do. You know what, Ron, you're drunk. Go here, play Monster here, Hunter. You know, what, here's here's a cha- here's a challenge. Then you guys come up with big topics for the next few shows. Then <laughs> I gave you a topic. I gave you one, and you said. No, that's a P. That was a Crossroads Plus. Plus. That was a P. That's that was a Crossroads, Crossroads Plus. Plus. It's, it's, it's perfect for Crossroads Plus, man. Come on. Yeah. It is. It is. Because we need. Because what? You know what? You know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this live on the show. I'm thinking about actually getting rid of the uh, the big topic section of Crossroads and just turning that into Crossroads Plus. So how do you guys feel about that? Ooh. I don't oh. care. That way is that's way it's a, that's way it's a it's an in and out thing that you know we can do and you know like <laughs> Corey said boo. I don't know, but he, I didn't say boo. Said, I said I said ooh. Oh, this isn't my I show. It's not boo. my channel. I thought you said boo. You do what you want. I mean that's what that's what we do on our show. We separate it into its own episode. Hmm. Mm. You know what? Mm. <laughs> It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I'll think about it. Honestly, honestly, the main thing is I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, trying to like cut down on the talk time on the individual episodes. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Cause I mean, I feel, I feel like, I feel like, and yeah, this is production. This is production notes that are kind of spilling into the live show and I'm not going to edit them out later, <laughs> but I mean, still, you know, like we, we've only got one viewer on Twitch right now. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's the bot. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, I think it's me. <laughs> okay, okay. Even better, because we got organic entry there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> organic but uh, you know what? Let's go ahead. <laughs> Let's go... <laughs> Let's go ahead and wrap this up tonight, because um, I, I I know it's a uh, it's 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 sleepy time for for a few people out here. That's not true. Um, Who sleeps? <laughs> it all it all depends. Uh, you got some assets for me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's our show for tonight, everyone. <laughs> We'd like to give a big thanks to Corey Derrick for checking uh, for checking in with us tonight and being a buddy, a pal, you know, like that all around awesome guy that he is. Corey, thank you for being here tonight. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> He's all stiff lip. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> I really enjoyed. <laughs> this is. I'm just reading off the script he gave me to read at the end of the show, guys. It's. Just... I didn't give I Don't didn't hurt script. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so before we head out, as always, uh, we're, uh, it's time to let everybody know how to get with and stay in contact with the crew. Corey, you go first. Plug yourself, man. Uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me uh, hosting the Boss Rush podcast and co-hosting Nintendo Power Block. And you can also find me on Standard Definition, our retro nostalgia podcast. All right, store you up. Uh, you can also find me on the EXP cast. We're a video game podcast in the Boss Rush Network. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at EXP cast. And then my personal Twitter at StoyMKE8. Austin, your turn. You can find me at Placed Austin on Twitter, PSN, Instagram, all that good. All right. And as always, you can find me on social media at Exodus803, um, as well as uh, Twitch and YouTube. And don't forget, I am part of the Boss Rush podcast crew uh, that airs Wednesday nights on twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Network. And I am the lead host for Boss Rush After Dark, which if you don't know about that, check out our Patreon. You'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot. <laughs> Uh, before, we, uh, before, we, before we shut it down, uh, be sure... Head over to BossRush.net and check out some of the wonderful articles that are out there, including the April 4th edition of Boss Rush Banner, where Shane Kelly asks, what is your preferred horror game tactic, fight or flight? What do you do? When I played Alien Isolation, I, there is no such thing as fighting, so I had to run. <laughs> run. Yeah. Or, or, or hide, actually, because the alien saw you, it was too late. Uh, also, uh, Mark Pereira delivers us a, a wonderful review for Red Wings American Aces that you guys should check out uh, also. And lastly, did you know that the, uh, musician Aaron Grubb released new music under another artist's name and then did it all to celebrate Pokemon? I did know that. I did, sure. I didn't know that, but David Lasby has all the information that you would want to know about it it's over there on the on the website right now. Aaron's a all great that more musician, can... by the way. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but he's a great musician. Uh, what does what does who's he affiliated with? What does he do? Okay, silence. All right. <laughs> Everybody okay. just froze on me. So, oh. Oh, oh! So you didn't hear the question? No. <laughs> I was like, I was like, who is he? What was he affiliated with? Uh, I mean, he's just affiliated with himself. We have a one v one interview with him that Celeste did about a year and a half ago. I want to say. Okay. Uh, but right. he ha- like he does a lot of Zelda and video game covers of songs, and it's he's really good. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. I'll have to check that out then. Um, I'm, I definitely missed that. His uh, music. I had no. His, his music's on Spotify. You can check it out. It's really good. All right, cool. All right, all that and more can be found over at BossRush.net, so head over and check out uh, check out more editorials and shows from our ever-growing family of creators and contributors. Uh, definitely hit us up on the Boss Rush Network Discord. Uh, it's it's it, it's free. Have Come over there, have some fun. And as always, you can chat with us and keep the conversation going by heading over to Twitter and hit us up on PS under, at at PS underscore Crossroads uh, to dish on more news, events, and topics while we're getting ready for the next installment of Crossroads. Everybody, this has been episode 76 Crossroads. Come back and join us next week for another all-new episode of the uh, the Crossroads podcast. Uh, As part of the Boss Games family, I want you all to go out, have a great night, and as always, 
play games, be better. Have a good night. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Do it. Bye.